ஹலோ எவ்ரி ஒன் அந்தரிக்கி நமஸ்காரம் எல்லாருக்கும் ஸ்வாகதம் வாம் வெல்கம் டு வித் ஜே இங்கிலீஷ் சேனல் திஸ் இஸ் மீ யோ மாஸ்டர் டீச்சர் நோ பூமிகா பட்டாச்சாஜி அண்ட் டுடே வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு டேக் அ லுக் அட் த சாப்டர் இலெக்ட்ரிக் கெமிஸ்ட்ரி பேசிக்கலி வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு ஸ்டார்ட் வித் சாப்டர் அண்ட் எண்ட் இட் ஆஸ் வெல் வித் அ லாட் ஆஃப் ஜே பிஒய் கியூஸ் ஆஸ் வெல் ஆஸ் தம் பேசிக் ப்ராக்டிஸ் கொஸ்டின்ஸ் ஆஸ் வெல் ஸோ லெட்ஸ் கோ டு த போர்ட் கமா So in this chapter, yes, I know, finally, electrochemistry, yes, in this chapter, we're going to take a look at resistivity, conductivity, some of the basic terms that are related to electrochemistry, yes, molar conductivity, we are going to take a look at Nernst equation, Kohlrausch law, electrochemical cell, electrolysis, batteries, corrosion, all of this. So I hope that you all are ready with me because today we are going to finish this chapter and finally be done with it. Yes. So everybody ready with me? Let's begin with our chapter that is electrochemistry. Yes. Now the moment I say this word electrochemistry, what really comes in your mind? What is it that comes in your mind? I'm pretty sure that the moment I say electrochemistry or let's try to break it down, isn't it? Let's try to break it down, everybody. Yes, I'm going to move this side. Before you read the statement, yes, don't read the statement now. Let me tell you that what actually it is and then maybe you can go ahead and read the, you know, the definitions. Yes. So when we say electrochemistry, let's try to break it down. Okay. The word electrochemistry, what do we understand? The moment we see this word, we can understand that electro means obviously electricity. Yes, we are going to use electricity and chemistry. The, the moment people say chemistry, we tend to think about some chemical reactions, isn't it? So when I'm saying chemistry here, let's say that this means that we are going to talk about some chemical reactions. Okay, my dear student. Yes. Now, if you read the statement, what is what does the statement say? Uh, what does the statement say the statement says that electrochemistry is the study of production of electricity from energy released during spontaneous chemical reactions and the use of electrical energy to bring about non spontaneous chemical reaction what does this mean that means that electrochemistry is that branch of chemistry which deals with the study of relationship between electric and chemical energy Yes. All right. Now I said that we are basically going to talk about electricity and chemical reaction. So that means that right in front of us, there are two types of, you know, two types of phenomenon that can occur, two types of incidents that can happen. One, which is chemical energy to electrical energy. What does that mean? That means that the chemical energy is happening by itself. No one is helping it, but the chemical energy is occurring at on its own pace. Yes, on its own pace. And remember that here we have we, we have just read about a word called as spontaneous. What do we mean by spontaneous? So let's talk about that. Chemical energy to electrical energy. Chemical energy is getting converted to electrical energy. Basically, imagine there is a container. in that container you have mixed two chemicals and there is a chemical energy there is a there is a chemical reaction that is going on because the chemical reaction is going on so that means that chemical energy is ge- is getting produced that chemical energy you are converting it to electrical energy and because i kept saying that the chemical energy is happening on its own the chemical energy is occurring on its own so what do we call these type of reactions these type of reactions are called as spontaneous reaction what do we call it we call it as spontaneous reaction that means that means that this reaction is capable of okay so now i'm writing it down here spontaneous what does spontaneous mean you know when you were in your younger standards yes when you were in your junior grades like 8th or 9th standard do you remember you have studied about a chapter called as combustion and flame and in that you you, you read about spontaneous combustion what is spontaneous combustion for example yes uh, d- did i ever tell you that yo guys this is sunday today let's go and burn the forest nobody says these kind of things right and if somebody says this is going to be absolutely wrong no one says this nobody goes the nobody goes to burn the forest i mean yeah there are horrible people obviously but we don't do that right how does a forest fire actually you know how how do you think that there is actually forest fire a forest fire you know the that how does a forest catch fire 
well because in the forest there are lots of dry branches dry leaves and when the sun is shining very bright they reach their ignition temperature and they start to burn right now you did not do anything what were you doing you were only sitting and watching the news <laughs> you did not do anything right yes so that means that it is capable to proceed in a given direction without any external energy being needed you did not do anything i mean yes there was external energy which was basically the sunlight in case of forest fire but in this case in the case of chemical energy you are not providing it any energy whatsoever no energy is needed by itself the chemical reaction will happen the chemical energy will get produced that chemical energy we will convert it to electrical energy and hence this is called as spontaneous reaction so let me write down that what really is spontaneous reaction yes spontaneous reactions are basically capable of yes capable of or no not cap capable of let's write capable to <coughs> uh actually capable of capable of proceeding yes they are capable of proceeding in a given direction yes in a given direction without any external without any external energy being needed okay without any external energy being needed all right yes okay now what was happening now let's say that we have another container in which again there are two kinds of uh, you know there are two kinds of chemicals that we have kept but this time what is happening is the reaction is not happening on its own so what we did was we provided it some external energy in what way electrical energy you see we are providing it some electrical energy that electrical energy is pushing the chemical reaction to happen once the chemical reaction occurs chemical energy is produced yes so what do we call these kind of reactions we call these kind of reactions to be non spontaneous reaction okay we call it to be non spontaneous reaction so let me write it down here as well what is a non spontaneous reaction my dear student okay what is a non spontaneous reaction yes yes we just have to basically write the opposite of spontaneous reaction that we have just studied right yes so we are just going to write the opposite of spontaneous reaction so basically let's write that down what what will it mean it will mean that it requires an external energy to proceed yes it requires an external energy to proceed all right yes so basically yes basically these are the two types of reactions that we are going to talk about in this chapter a little too much just a little too much okay so is this clear everybody do you understand what is spontaneous reaction and what is non spontaneous reaction and in this chapter we are going to talk about chemical energy to electrical energy electrical energy to chemical energy now when i keep saying chemical energy to electrical energy electrical energy to chemical energy what comes in your mind to be very honest in my mind what comes is a electrochemical cell or basically just a cell even the normal cells that we have we know that in a cell what what is happening there is there are chemicals inside the cell those chemicals they react and they produce some energy that energy is produced into electrical energy which is what we which is what we see in our uh, remotes and all of that isn't it yes that's what we see correct that's what we see so then let's start to read about this electrochemical cells now electrochemical cells are the superset yes what do you call it superset now you're going to ask me ma'am what is superset in mathematics you must have read about superset okay example population is the superset yes now in population you have in in population you have female population male population children in population right so these are the subsets of the superset population got my point yeah got my point okay so very similarly electrochemical cell is your superset okay electrochemical cell can be further divided into electrolytic cell okay electrolytic cell this is non spontaneous what is happening here is that it converts electrical energy into chemical energy so this is your non spontaneous kind of a kind of a cell and then we have the galvanic cell yes the galvanic cell what they do is they are spontaneous that means they convert chemical energy to 
इलेक्ट्रिकल एनर्जी गैल्वेनिक सेल वोल्टेक सेल ओके दीज आर ऑल द सिमिलर काइंड ऑफ सिमिलर काइंड ऑफ सेल्स वॉट दे डू इज दे कन्वर्ट केमिकल एनर्जी टू इलेक्ट्रिकल एनर्जी Getting my point, so we are going to talk about this case first. We are going to talk about this galvanic cell and voltaic cell first, and then in the second half of the chapter, we are going to talk about electrolytic cell. Easy peasy, yes. Till now, what is it looking like? It is looking like easy peasy, everybody. Yes, great. Okay. Now, let's start to talk about the Daniel cell. Okay, let's start to talk about Daniel cell. but before daniel cell everybody in this chapter we are also going to talk a lot about my dear students we are also going to talk a lot about please listen carefully we are going to talk about oxidation and reduction all right what are we going to talk about we are going to talk a lot about oxidation and reduction all right yes which is basically the redox reactions and don't worry if you haven't read redox reaction don't worry at all because very soon i am going to upload redox reaction in fact within 2 to 3 days you will be seeing redox reaction in this channel just promise me that you will watch that session okay so now oxidation reduction basically in one uh, basically in 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 one of the electrode there will be oxidation happening and in the other yeah, other electrode you will you will be having reduction how to remember this that in which place what is happening okay this is something that even when we were young right even i was taught like this by my uh, teachers and they taught me that there are two things that you have to remember that is red cat n ox okay what do you have to remember red cat n ox okay and what does this mean this means that this means that reduction reduction at cathode all right yes anode oxidation okay all right these are the two things that you have to remember apart from this one more thing that you have to remember is one more thing that you have to remember is one second uh, i want to write it with a yes 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 so you have to remember oil rig what do you have to remember you have to remember you have to remember oil rig what is oil rig oil rig is basically take a look at it everybody my dear student have a look yes oxidation oxidation is loss of electrons all right yes oxidation is loss of electrons my dear student and what is reduction reduction is reduction is gain of electrons okay so this is one thing that you have to that you have to know this is the prerequisite of this of this chapter in this chapter because we are going to talk about this a lot so i have written all the cheat codes here this is your cheat code you have to remember it red cat anox oil rig oxidation is loss of elect electrons reduction is gain of electrons okay and in cathode there is always reduction happening in and in anode there is always oxidation happening getting my point everybody this is all clear this is all clear yes 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 and now we come to the daniel cell everybody are you all ready with me everyone chalo let's talk about it so who designed this daniel cell yes who designed this daniel cell obviously we all know that it was designed by sir john daniel okay john daniel made this cell he designed it okay now take a look at this cell very carefully take a look at this cell very carefully what are the things that you are going to see here okay what are the things that you are going to see here all right now in this cell what is happening is this is your zinc this is your zinc rod this is your zinc rod the zinc rod is dipped in the zinc rod is dipped in znso4 solution okay all right yes and in the other side yes you have a copper rod the copper rod is dipped in CuSO4 solution cool all right this this much is making sense everyone this is making sense to you this is making sense right okay then what we have done is we have connected these two okay we have connected these two rods via a voltmeter okay we have connected this with voltmeter all right yes everybody good 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 everybody good to go okay now now that we have connected okay now forget that we have a salt bridge here forget about it okay forget about it completely just forget about 
the fact that we have a salt bridge here we do not have any salt bridge okay for now what i'm doing is i'm just cancelling this okay all right just cancelling it so you have a zinc rod that is dip, dipped in ZnSO4 solution and you have a copper rod that is dipped in copper sulfate solution. Does it not look like there are two containers here? There are two containers. Yes, in one container you have one rod, in other container you have another rod. Yes, easy peasy everybody understanding this? Great. Okay. Now see what is happening. Now the moment you have connected this electricity is, electricity has started to run. Yes. Yes, what is happening? You have connected them to a battery. You have connected them to a volt, voltmeter. Yes. Now what is happening is the Zn, the Zn rod, okay, the zinc rod, what it will do is it will start releasing electrons, 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 electrons. It will start releasing electrons. How? Because zinc has a tendency, zinc has a tendency to give away electrons, okay. Zinc has a tendency to give away electrons and become 2 plus. Yes, it has a tendency to get to the 2 plus state. Yes, it has a tendency to become go to the 2 plus oxidation state and release the 2 electrons. Get my point? Yes. All right. It has lost 2 electrons and it has become Zn2 plus. Okay. Now, these electrons, they will start running through here. They will start running through this voltmeter. Yes. And they will come here to this copper rod. In this copper rod, now you have electrons, 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 which have come. Now, in the younger days, you have read that what will happen is copper sulfate will break down here. Cu2 plus it will become SO4 minus it will be, right? Yes, it will start breaking up. So, this Cu2 plus, my dear students, the Cu2 plus in the solution, what it will do is it will grab two electrons from the rod and it will try to become so cu2 plus will gather two electrons and it will become cu solid yes so basically what really is happening in this whole experiment check it out everyone yes in this whole experiment what is happening now is so what we just we, we just spoke about it okay in one of the side in the zinc side what is happening is zn is 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 losing two electrons and it is forming zn2 plus okay it is forming zn2 plus whereas copper 2 plus is catching hold of two electrons and it is trying to form copper in the solid state yeah all right so basically do you understand do you understand that slowly and steadily what is happening is this copper 2 plus this copper 2 plus which grabbed which which grabbed two electrons and it formed copper now what it will do is now what it will do is take a look at it everybody this copper will try and it will try and attach itself to the copper rod because it has formed copper solid right it has formed copper solid isn't it so this will go and attach itself to the copper so slowly and steadily after some time you know what we will see we will see that the copper rod the copper rod gets thick the cu rod gets thick all right and zinc do you know what zinc is doing right zinc is getting rid of two electrons and it is going into the solution as zn2 plus yes as zn2 plus it is going into the solution so basically after some time we will see, see that zn gets thin okay the zinc rod is getting thinner 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 and the copper rod is getting thicker 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 okay all right now here uh, one question that might come in your boards boards obviously they will ask you in boards not in J means or uh, anywhere else right the electrons are flowing how are the electrons flowing my dear student the electrons are flowing do you see the electrons are flowing from the zinc rod to the copper rod before we reach there, tell me, what is this zinc side of the container, the dabba, the dabba in which you have the zinc rod, what is that? What is that? Any idea? Any idea what is happening there? See, loss of electrons. If it is loss of electrons, my dear student, then can we call it, can we call it oxidation? Yes, this is oxidation. And oxidation is happening at anode, yes. So, the zinc side is your anode because oxidation is happening. And you see that reduction is gain of electron. Now, copper is gaining electrons. So, can I call this to be reduction? 
and where does reduction happen red cat so reduction is happening in the cathode so the copper side of the dabba is your reduction that is cathode yes so now coming back to the question that i asked you how is the electron flowing the electrons are flowing yes let me write that down here electrons are flowing from flowing from where to where cathode to anode anode to cathode yes yes they are flowing from anode to cathode now that electrons are flowing from anode to cathode my dear student what can i say i can say that electricity is flowing i i will have to say that electricity flows from cathode to anode because the flow of electricity is ulta right the flow of electricity is opposite to electrons flow right so electrons are flowing from cathode to anode okay so basic things that we have to remember here is electrons flow from anode to cathode and electricity flows from cathode to anode make sense everybody yes yes all right now what if what if i try to connect a bulb here do you know what will happen yes the bulb will glow but only for some time the bulb will glow but it will glow only for some time why is that so why is that so any idea why the bulb is going to glow only for some time everybody any idea regarding that let me tell you do you see here that what is happening here what is happening that after a while you will see that zn2 plus ions are getting accumulated zn2 plus ions are getting accumulated in the solution why because zinc rod is giving away to electrons and it is forming zn2 plus zn2 plus ions are getting accumulated in this solution and in this side you can see that so4 minus ions are getting accumulated cu is grabbing hold of electrons and going to the rod but so4 minus they are in the solution right now after some time what happens the flow of electron stops why all this time the electron was getting attracted towards the copper 2 plus ions right yes it was getting attracted towards the copper 2 plus ion but no now what is happening is there is zn2 plus ion na, which is positive so the electron now starts to build affinity that i why should i go there i have a zn2 plus ion here only no there is zn2 plus ion here which is positive ion so positive ion and negative ion what will happen it will start to gather up isn't it it will start to gather up right so now i'm going to write here okay now i'm going to write here please check it out everybody yes please check it out what i'm saying i'm saying that after a while zn2 plus okay zn2 plus was getting accumulated here we just saw zn2 plus was getting accumulated accumulated in the solution right yes in the solution and we also see that so4 two minus was getting accumulated in the solution was getting accumulated in the solution right yes in the solution so now what is happening so the electron flow stops because the zn2 plus is a positive and it has affinity towards electron right that's what i said that's what i said what did i say one second yes the electron flow the electron flow stops stops which is why the bulb does not glow for a very long time okay stops because because zn2 plus is positive is positive and has affinity towards towards electron so the electron is not able to go to the copper side at all so that means that we will need to neutralize this whole situation so that the bulb glows right we will need to neutralize it and how do we neutralize yes absolutely right we are introducing a salt bridge here what are we going to do we are going to introduce a salt bridge here so that so that what will happen so that our yes so that what will happen so that this zn2 plus and the so4 two minus that we have created so much in the solution that will neutralize a little bit so what are we doing we are introducing here a salt bridge okay we are introducing a salt bridge now what is this name ya salt bridge what is this name salt bridge ma'am why have why are we introducing a salt bridge okay 
salt bridge as the name suggests it is a salt bridge it is a u shaped tube okay it is a u shaped tube that is introduced to these solutions yes and they are connected now but you will say that ma'am sometime back only you said that these two containers they are connected with the help of a voltmeter ha baba it is but tell me something don't we know that in physics right in physics uh, we know that the circuit has to be completely you know completely closed right it has to be completely closed this way as well as this way so what we did was we did connect it this way but what about this way we haven't connected it this way so now we are going to connect it with salt bridge okay all right we are introducing a salt bridge yes a salt bridge is basically what did i say it's a u shaped glass tube which has salt what kind of a salt what kind of a salt salt bridge has salt bridge has salt yes it has salt okay i'm not going to write just salt here let me write down that <laughs> let me write down that it's a glass tube glass tube u shaped filled with salt filled with salt and and there is not just salt okay and we also add a polysaccharide okay what do we add we add a poly saccharide we are a polysaccharide here yes what does this polysaccharide do this polysaccharide usually is agar agar gel like substance okay it's a it's an agar agar gel like substance so that the salt can easily go to the solution okay you know that gel kind of a substance are what Se semi solid it should it it can easily pass on something right it's very mucus very uh, jelly like lubricant kind of a thing so easily the salt can flow into the solution okay all right so these two containers now they are connected with a salt bridge the salt bridge has salt usually example of the salts that is there is kcl okay usually you use kcl however however not always okay not always kcl is not used kcl is not used when you have electrodes that are made up of ag thallium plumbum and mercury okay kcl is not used in case of ag tl okay um, 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 um. agra thailand plumbum lead Ag agra thailand london and uh, what was it mercury yes london hong kong yes agra thailand london hong kong in this cases you do not use the kcl you will have to use some other salt okay you will have to use some other salt right everybody now basically now let's take this example only kcl okay so we know that kcl the moment it goes to the solution what will happen it will break there will be k plus cl minus yes kcl will form k plus and cl minus yes this k plus this k plus will have affinity towards so42 minus agreed everybody yes this k plus will have affinity towards so42 minus makes sense everyone yes it will have it will have affinity towards so42 minus and this cl minus who will be able to hold on to the zn2 plus ions right and this way what are we doing in this way we are neutralizing the solution and then now what is happening is now when we connect a bulb here okay now when we connect a bulb here we see that the bulb keeps glowing and glowing and glowing and glowing okay so that means that the salt bridge has okay the salt bridge has about three importances that we have to talk about all right what are these importance what are these importance okay so let me write it down here guys let me write that down here which way should i stand yeah i think i should stand here right yes so the salt bridge what it does is number 1 maintains it maintains what does it maintain it maintains electrical neutrality okay it maintains electrical neutrality all right this is your number 1 second is second is completes the circuit it completes the circuit yes we just saw that right it completed the circuit 
and third one is it reduces junction potential what is junction potential you saw that one side there was only positive ions that was increasing 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 and the other side so4 2 minus was increasing 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 so that is called as junction potential and that junction potential has been reduced okay so reduces junction potential all right what it what does it do it reduces junction potential and this my dear student is the importance of your salt bridge after you have connected the salt bridge the bulb glows continuously continuously and continuously unless of course you switch it off of course unless of course you have to switch it off okay all right everybody understood great now all this time i kept saying that these were dabba these were con these were con containers right what are these containers and dabba that i kept saying but choose these two containers that we kept talking about right these two containers that i kept talking about they are basically half cells okay the two containers that i kept saying the two containers or the dabbas yes the two containers are called are called what are called the half cells all right are called half cell half cells now did you see did you see that one side what was happening was zinc was getting converted to zn2 plus and two electron which was basically what loss of electrons loss of electron is your oxidation right so oxidation was happening in one side right and we saw in the other side cu2 plus ion was grabbing hold of two electron and it was forming cu in the solid form this was what gain of electrons can we call this to be reduction yes absolutely yes so the two half cells where reduction is happening and oxidation is happening together what do we call it we would like to call it as redox couple isn't it yes redox couple but you couple couple means what couple means that a pair right couple means that two things there is reduction happening there is oxidation happening so can we just call it to be as redox couple yes it is what it is basically these this combination of two cells the combination of two half cell everyone if you see the combination of two half cell will be two half cells are called as redox couple makes sense yes are called as redox couple makes sense everybody yes makes sense guys yes right the cu2 plus this is where the reduction half reaction is happening half half reaction is happening no both the side and this side what is happening this is your oxidation half reaction yes both the side you can see that half reaction half reaction is happening so basically when you combine both of them the half cells together becomes the redox couple make sense everybody yes all right great okay now tell me something that all these while when we spoke about we saw that how the electron was flowing from one side of the cell to the other side of the cell right but what was the electrons flow anode to cathode yes why was it flowing from anode to cathode everybody why was it flowing from anode to cathode yes any idea why it was flowing from anode to cathode? Because obviously there was potential difference now, Baba. There has to be a potential difference now. Why else will it go? Why else will it move? For example, have you seen a waterfall? Waterfall, have you seen? So I used to stay in northeast, right? And I've seen a lot of waterfall. And how is the waterfall usually? The water, water falls from a top height, right? Water flows. Why does the water flows? Because there is a there is a height difference. So water flows from a very high height, <laughs> very high altitude to lower altitude, it falls, right? Yes. Now, if I ask the water like Abra Kadabra, Chumanta, start going up, ding, 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 will the water go up? No, but it does. In your house, from the tank, the underground tank, brrr, you take the water to the up, that, that syntax, the tank that is overhead on the terrace, isn't it? How do you do it? You have to use a motor. You have to use a motor. Just like that, if you do through mantar, abracadabra, the water won't go, right? The water won't go just like that. The water will only go if you attach a what? If you attach a motor to it. So now, similarly, everybody, tell me. So we saw that anode to cathode had a potential difference, which is why the electrons were flowing. Now, let's assume that this potential. Okay, let me write that down, everybody. Okay, let me write that down here. Okay. So we saw that anode to cathode anode to cathode we can see that anode to cathode what is happening yes electrons flow anode to cathode electro electrons flow why because 
potential difference potential difference yes due to potential difference the anode to cathode electrons were flowing great okay let's assume let's assume this potential difference to be e okay let's call this let's assume this potential difference to be potential difference to be capital e all right let's call it capital e now what if i want to i i just want to do an experiment yeah human mind right human mind we just want to make our life sometimes harder so i i just want to make it a little tougher i mean chapter has to be long no how else will we get 25 pages chapter see this is such a big chapter how because some people must have done some experiment which is why we have to read it so the experiment was that let's apply external potential okay what are we going to do we are going to apply now let's apply let's apply what are we applying external potential okay let's apply external potential cool yes and what do we call this let's call it to be e capital x okay e external let's call it all right this this external potential is going to be opposite to e basically i just want to see what is going to happen i want to see what is happening okay all right so this e external is going to be opposite opposite means but choose what does opposite mean here that cu to zinc all this while electrons were flowing from zinc to cu right now we are applying the potential copper to zinc okay opposite to the potential difference so now i have three cases that can happen right i have three cases what are the things that can happen here what are the things that can happen here let's talk about it number 1 number 1 what can happen is if my e external okay if my e external e external if it is less than capital e then what will happen if it is less than capital e then what will happen obviously the electron flow will be as usual yes if my e external is less than e then what will happen electron flow as usual as usual bole to zinc to copper yes second case is that if my external potential is equal to if my external potential is equal to the potential difference then what will happen same same both are okay imagine i am pushing it pushing some object like this and there is someone else also pushing the same object like this will the will the object move it will not move it will not move right so what do i say here i can say that no flow will happen no flow of electrons no flow of electrons right now the third case is that the third possible case is that my e external is greater than capital e now what will happen this is now becoming non spontaneous yes this is now non spontaneous because i know for a fact that the electrons will try to move from zinc to uh, copper not from copper to zinc but now what i'm doing is i'm trying to do the unachievable i am applying external potential so that copper to zinc the electrons flow right so this is not spontaneous because otherwise it will not happen so now what will happen is that electron flow from yes from copper to zinc yes and this my dear student is what is this guys this is your this is your non spontaneous okay this is your non spontaneous this is your electrolytic cell that we will talk about later this situation okay this situation will be your electrolytic cell i know i know i'm covering I'm, i'll move yes so this situation is your electrolytic cell which we will talk about in some time all right yes now all these story that i told you right all this story that i told you that bachcha from zinc to copper it will go there is that so for solution there is copper sulfate solution there is this happening there is this happening every time do you really think that in your exam also you will have so much time to write down all this story i don't think so i don't think so will you be able to do it i don't think so so that means that we will need a some we will need something that is very easy right we will need something that is very easy 
So let's take that same example that Zn and copper. Yeah, let's let's take the same example of Zn and copper. And how do we how do we represent the cell? Okay, representation of the cell. Representation of cell. Okay, representation of cell. How do we how do we write that? What we are going to do is we know that Zn was in the solid form in the rod, right? So from Zns it was becoming Zn two plus. Yes, in the aqueous form it was coming. It was coming to the solution, right? This is happening on one side of the container. Now I will be I will be giving I will be providing here two lines. Okay, I will be providing here two lines, and then I will write the other half of the reaction. What is the other half of the reaction? Cu two plus was in the aqueous form. Yes, it was grabbing hold of two electrons and it was forming Cu in the solid form. All right. Yes. So basically, this becomes your salt bridge. This is your salt bridge. The two lines that you see, this is your salt bridge. Okay. Yes. The two lines that you see here, this is your salt bridge. Right here, my dear student, this is your solid metal. This is your solid metal. This is in the aqueous form. This is in the aqueous form, right? Then again, what is happening here? This is in the aqueous form. This is in the aqueous form, and you can see that this is your solid metal. Okay. Now, this much information suggests that this is your complete redox reaction that is happening in this cell. Okay. This tells us that this is your complete cell reaction that is happening. Apart from this, if you want to give some more information, then that is also doable. How? See, see what are you doing? You are writing here one molar aqueous one molar. You can do this. Okay. All right. See here, you are writing the pressure one atmospheric pressure one molar. Yes, you can write all this information as well, just to make more sense in this whole notation or in this whole representation. Yes, understood, everybody. Getting my point? Yes. All right, everyone. Getting, getting it, getting it, getting it. Yes. Cool. Easy peasy, everybody. Easy peasy. Everything is making sense. Do write it down in the chat box that you all are understanding. Otherwise, how will I understand that if you are understanding or not? Yes. My understanding goes by your understanding. Okay. My goodness, that was a tongue twister. Now, <laughs> that was a tongue twister. All right. Yes, guys. Let's come back. Let's come back. Okay. Let's come back to electrode potential now. Okay, what are we going to understand? We're going to understand electrode potential. Remember how we spoke about some time back that why was it that why was it that? Okay, one second. Yeah. Sorry. Let me drink some water. Hmm. So I was telling you. Remember that why the electrons were flowing from anode to cathode? Why was it flowing? Because there was a potential difference. So what is this electrode potential? Hey, Baba, there was the zinc rod and there was this copper rod. What are those? Cathode anode. What are cathode anode? Electrode. Yes, there is a potential difference between the electrode and that, my dear student, is your electrode potential. Did I say it right? No. So the cathode and the anode, with respect to the solutions that they are in, remember the copper rod. Yes, the copper rod with respect to the copper sulfate solution, there was a potential difference. Yes, there was a potential difference between them, which is why what was happening was the Cu two plus ion could grab hold of the two electrons, and here in this side, the Zn rod and the Zn SO four solution, there was a potential difference between the ions in the solution and the zinc metal. That is called as electrode potential. Now read the statement. What does it say? It says that potential difference developed between between who between Metal electrode and its ion in solution. Okay. Yes. All right. Understood, everybody. Clear. Now, electrode potential can be different for each one of the metal, right? Obviously, if there are different metals, you will have different electrode potential, right? Different solution, different electrode potential, isn't it? Yes. Right, everybody. And that is why we have to bring in another term called as standard electrode potential. More about that a little later. Before that, I have to write here something. Please understand that the cathode has, the cathode has. Which one is the cathode, guys? Which one is the cathode? Copper was cathode. Yes. The cathode has what positive potential? All right. The cathode has positive potential with respect to solution. With 
respect to solution yes yes of course of course cu2 plus 2 cu cu2 plus 2 cu so positive yes and the anode has and the anode has negative potential the anode has negative potential with respect to solution here what was happening zn was giving away electrons to get to zn2 plus yes so negative potential and cap, uh, positive potential that is what is happening but now what is happening is this is not suiting us right this is not suiting us of course every metal will have different different potential so it doesn't make sense in chemistry we like something like like things that are standard right we always like definition we always maintain definitions that are standard so we bring in something called as standard electrode potential standard electrode potential is basically yes see potential difference developed between metal electrodes and the solution of its ion at one molar concentration at one bar pressure at a particular temperature no the temperature is also 300 kelvin so one molar concentration one bar pressure can i just call this to be can i just call this to be unity I can just call this to be unity. So I can say that electrode potential when the concentration of all the species involved in half cell is unity. That is one molar, one bar atmosphere and temperature at 298 Kelvin. This becomes your standard electrode potential which is denoted by, it is denoted by everybody. Yes, please, please, please make sure it is denoted by E naught. Okay, it is denoted by E naught up. O at the top that is your standard electrode potential okay now like I said that there is oxidation potential there is reduction potential the electrode potential for the oxidation half of the cell that will be oxidation potential yes and the reduction potential is the electrode potential for the reduction half of the cell that will be called as reduction potential right yes everybody and obviously there are standard oxidation potential standard reduction potential now you'll ask me ma'am how will we know how will we know which one is standard oxidation potential which one is standard reduction potential i'll tell you i'll tell you okay standard oxidation potential the moment you see that it is written as e naught e naught and then here there will be m2 m2 plus that means that this is your oxidation potential and here if you see here if you see that it is written as it is written as e naught and then it is written as m not 2 plus actually not 2 plus 2 plus i don't know why i wrote that because i think i was trying to explain you something else it will be just a second let me remove this whole thing yeah writing it down once again everybody check it out it will be e naught yes m m plus yes that means it is from the solid state it is going to the it is going to the positive state right here what do we write here we write here we write the moment you see this you will be able to understand see here we will write m plus 2m and this means that this is your reduction potential so the moment you see this you will be able to understand that which one is oxidation which one is reduction but but Whenever we are solving sums or in chemistry, when we are talking about standard electrode potential, IUPAC came up, yes, the big daddy, the godfather of chemistry, they came up and they said that whenever we are talking about electrode potential, conveniently, we will always take it as reduction potential. We will always, always take it as reduction potential. Getting my point? Yes. All right. This is what IUPAC has told us. And that's why we will always follow this. Once IUPAC has told us, after that, there is no argument, guys. Right? There is no argument. Just listen to what they're saying. Okay? We just have to listen to what they're saying. Okay? Now, we come to another term called cell potential. Guys, I understand that this chapter can be a little boring. But guess what? Yes, it is JEE. -E. Doesn't matter how boring it is, we still have to study because we want to be the top ranker, isn't it? Yes. So now let's talk about the cell potential. What is cell potential? What is cell potential? Are, 
Electrode potential was what? The rod with the solution. The rod with the solution. What is cell potential? Combined together, the two half cells become the whole cell. They become the redox couple. Now, what are we talking about? Read the definition. You will understand. Yes, read the definition. You will understand. What is cell potential? Cell potential is basically the potential difference between the two electrodes. The zinc and the cathode. The potential difference between the two half cells. That is called as your cell potential. Yes, the difference between the oxidation half cell and the reduction half cell, that is your cell potential. Yes. So, how do we calculate it? How do you calculate it? It is calculated from the values of the electrode potential. You see the electrode potential of the two half cell. Yes, the constituting the cell. That is your cell potential. So, basically, how are we going to write it? Again, okay. So, by convention, by convention, we are going to write it as E cell is equal to, E cell is equal to E right, that is the copper side, minus E left, all right, yes. Or we can write it as E cell is equal to E cathode minus E anode, we can write it like this, okay. All right. This is also called as, this is also called as EMF. Okay. This is also called as electromotive cell. What, what is it called as? Called the cell electromotive force or EMF. Okay. Electromotive force or EMF when no current is drawn through the cell. When? No current is drawn through the cell. Okay. All right. EMF of cell should be positive. Otherwise, it will not be feasible. What do we mean by this sentence? EMF of the cell should be positive. Otherwise, it will not be feasible. Okay. What do we mean by that? What do we mean by that? Any idea, guys? Any idea? We will talk about it in some time. We will talk about it, okay? If it is not positive, if it is negative, that means that it will not be feasible. The reaction will not be feasible. All right. Yes, everybody. Is this all understood? So, cell potential, cell electromotive force. I think I have explained it all. Right, everybody? Yes, I think I have explained it all. But if you just want to write it, let, uh, let me also write it here that it is measured in. It is measured in volts. You have to remember this. Okay. It is measured in volts. The cell electromotive force or this. Yes. How do you write it? You write it as E cell. Okay. You write it as E cell. And it is called the cell electromotive force when no current is drawn through the cell. And by convention, what do you do? E cell is equal to E right minus E left or E cell is equal to E cathode minus E anode. All right, everybody, this is absolutely clear. All, everybody has understood. Easy peasy, biryani tasty. Everything is crystal clear here. Now, let's solve a question. What do you all say? Let's solve a question. Here is your question. The question is, the EMF of the following cells is given. Cu2C plus, Cu2Cu2 plus, 1 molar, Ag plus 2, Ag, E0 is given as 0 0.46 volt. Okay, all right. And then you are given Zn2 plus, okay, it is given to you as Zn2, Zn2 plus and then Cu2 plus to Cu, uh, E0 is 1.10 volt. Now, you have to find the EMF of the cell Zn2, Zn2 plus, Ag plus 2, Ag. Okay, let's find out the solution. I think it should be easy. Let's calculate guys, okay. So, basically what are we going to do is, here, from the first one, from this one, we can understand. From this one, from this one, we can understand that we are given Cu plus 2 Ag plus, okay. This will give us what? This will give you 2 Ag, just balancing it and writing it, okay. 2 Ag plus Cu 2 plus. And for this, the E0 is given to you. How did this open up now? Ha. Yes. And for this, E0 is given to you as 0 0.46. Right. 
For the second one, let's write it. For the second one, what do we write? For the second one, I can see that it is Zn plus 2Ag plus, yes? No, 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 no. Cu, Cu, Cu. Yes? Zn plus Cu2 plus will give us, will give us from this, from this you can understand that Zn plus Cu2 plus. So that means that here it will be Zn2 plus plus Cu. And for this E0 value is given 1.10. For the third one, what we are asked to find out, look at this. Okay, what are we asked? To, what is the reaction here? Zn plus 2Ag plus gives you Zn2 plus plus Ag. Right? Yes, for this we have to find the E0 value. All right. So what do we do? What do we do? All we can do is basically, all we have to do is, so E0 cell is equal to, yes, whatever E0 is given to you, E0 1 plus E0 2. That's all we have to do. That's all we have to do. That means E0 1 is 0 0.46 plus E0 2 is what? E0 2 is 1.10. That means that this is equal to 1.56 volt. Yes, which means that option A is the correct answer. That's it you have to do. Very simple, very easy, isn't it? Yes, very simple, very easy, correct? So that's all that you have to do, okay? All right, everybody. Now, moving on from here. Aha, uh -huh. now we come to another very, very, very important topic that is your standard hydrogen electrode. That is she. She is very important. <laughs> okay, now first things first, everybody, you have to understand that this standard hydrogen electrode, she, it is a reference electrode. What is it? It is a reference electrode. Okay. So, I'm going to write this down first here. Whatever are the, the most important points that I'm writing down here, everybody check it out. What am I writing? This is a reference electrode. You will have amazing handwritten notes from here. Do you see how I'm writing down everything in that one page? I'm writing it down properly so that you get the whole notes after the class is over. Now, I said that it is reference electrode. Second thing that is that it can behave. It can behave like an anode or as well as, as well as like an cathode half cell. As well as like a cathode half cell. So basically it can behave like an anode half cell or it can behave like a cathode half cell okay all right everybody so now in the standard hydrogen electrode what exactly do we do let's understand that everybody let's take a look at the picture very carefully so i'm just zooming in here just zooming in here everybody can you all see it? can you all see it do you see it now here what is happening check it out here what is happening hmm? here we have here we have what are the things that we have let's write that down first of all you here have one molar this is acidic okay one molar hcl solution okay one molar hcl solution you will have okay then you have a glass tube here an inverted glass tube and here you have a gap do you see here you have a gap through this you will push hydrogen gas okay through this you will push hydrogen gas and in this glass tube, do you see that there is a platinum wire as well? Yes, why platinum? You might want to ask me that ma'am, why platinum? Why platinum? Yes, why platinum? That's because platinum can absorb, okay? that That's because platinum can absorb hydrogen. Platinum can absorb hydrogen, okay? Alright, so what are the things that we have done? We have taken... 1 molar HCl, this is what is written here, acid containing 1 mole dm cube of hydrogen ion, okay. So, 1 molar HCl, basically that's what it means, right. Then you have a platinum electrode, you have a platinum electrode, why? Because platinum can absorb hydrogen and through this gap, you have pushed in a lot of hydrogen gas which is at 1 atmospheric pressure, done, okay, done. These were the things that you had to note down, These, this is what is present in the standard hydrogen electrode cool all right now what are we doing what are we going to do let's write down let's write the anode half cell and the cathode half cell 
Okay, so let's write down the cathode half cell first. Cathode half cell reaction. What is happening in the cathode? Reduction. Okay, in the cathode half cell, reduction is happening. Yes, reduction is happening. What kind of reaction here? See, check it out. H plus ions. Yes, H plus ions, which are in the aqueous state, right? That basically in this case, in this part, yes. The H plus aqueous, it is going to grab hold of some electron, one electron, and it will get converted to half H2 gas. Okay. All right, everybody. Great. Now see what is happening. Okay. Now let's write down the anode half cell. And what happens in the anode half cell? Oxidation, everybody. Is that right? Oxidation is happening. Oxidation is happening. Correct. Okay. All right. So that means that ulta of this we will write. Just the ulta of this we will have to write. So basically half H2. In the gaseous form, what will it do? It will get converted to H plus in the aqueous state plus electron. It will lose electron and it will become this. Okay. All right. So this is basically what is happening. Now, <laughs> now check it out what actually happens here. Okay. I'm going to change the color again. Now what happens here is the E naught value, the E naught of H plus to half H2 is equal to zero. Because I said, right, it, can, it, is, it is a reference electrode. It can behave like an anode half cell as well as a cathode half cell, right? Now check it out. The very, very, very important part of it, okay? Very important part of it is very important part. See, the E0 value of H plus 2 half hydrogen gas, half H2 is equal to 0. And my dear student, surprisingly, in fact, not even surprisingly, half H2 2 H plus aqueous is also 0. That means the reduction potential and the oxidation potential both are 0. And that is why we use it as a reference electrode my dear student. And actually the reaction that is happening here is H2 like this. 2 it becomes 2 H plus which is why I am writing, writing here half H2. You getting Yes, are you getting my point? This is the actual reaction H2 to 2H plus and then it is obviously what all this thing that is happening as you can see. Okay, so that means that we can use this. We can use this and we can measure electrode potential of all the other metals that we have. So shall we do that? Shall we do that? Let's try and measure one. What do you all say? Let's try and measure one. All right, I am going to need to drink a little more water. Okay. Hmm. All right, guys. No breaks right now. If you want to take a break, you can pause it. Go take a break. Come back. Read it again. Okay. All right. Come back and read it again, everybody. Chalo. Now, time for you to focus on this image. Focus on this image. Okay. Focus on this image. So, what is happening here? Once again, what are we doing is we are taking zinc rod in ZnSO4 solution. Zinc rod in ZnSO4 solution. Okay. And in the other side, we are taking our hydrogen gas. Cool. All right. We're taking hydrogen gas. Uh, let me just write this to be ulta. This is our plus sign and this is our minus sign. Okay. This is our minus sign because I'm, I want to take zinc as cathode and I want to take the she as anode all right okay everybody this is what we're taking right here you know one molar hydrogen ions are there here you are ZnSO4 solution okay let's try to write start writing all the possible things that we have here so what are the things that we can see first of all we know that E0 oxidation potential of she is zero and we also know that E0 of reduction, E0 reduction potential of uh, uh, standard hydrogen electrode that is also 0. Great. Yes. So that means that now my E0 cell is equal to, what will be my E0 cell guys? You know it very well. It is going to be E0 RP. Yes. E0 RP of cathode. Reduction potential. Remember conveniently we always take reduction potential guys. So E0 RP cathode and E0 reduction potential anode yes 
And what did I take? I took anode as my she and I took Zn to be my cathode. So let's write that down. That means that E0, what will happen here is Zn2, Zn2 plus is happening, right? It's cathode, row. No, 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 no. What is happening here is E0. Let's just write it a little better. Yes. So with reduction potential, now we are taking reduction potential. So that means that E0, yes, E0, Zn2 plus, Zn2 plus to Zn, that is what is happening, yes. And here what I can write is reduction potential. So E0, H plus half H2, yes, right, that is what is happening, correct. Now, very carefully, very carefully, just, just observe, just observe, you will get to see everything here. So, now this I know that this whole term is equal to 0 because we have just written RP or OP that is oxidation potential or reduction potential both are 0. So, let me just write it like that. This whole term is equal to 0. So, that means my E0 cell is equal to E0 Zn2 plus 2 Zn. Right now you are going to ask me but ma'am who is going to tell us this? Who is going to tell us this term, right? You must be asking that who is going to tell us this term, ma'am. But to this term, you know who is going to tell you? This term, right here, you have a voltmeter, right? This voltmeter will tell you, the voltmeter reading will tell you this term. And here, as it is written, see, 0 0.76 is written. Do you see? 0 0.76, exactly, exactly, my dear students. So, basically, what is happening here is, what is happening here is that the E0 Zn2 plus to Zn is equal to, actually Zn2 plus to Zn2 plus to Zn is equal to minus 0 0.76 volt, okay. There is a minus sign before the 0 0.76 volt, okay. Now what does this mean? The voltmeter reading is telling us that it is minus 0 0.76 volt. So why am I telling you minus 0 0.76 volt? Because see, in this picture, they had actually taken the zinc rod to be the anode and the hydrogen to be a cathode. But I have done it ulta, right? Just to explain you better, you, you have to understand that here, the voltmeter reading is actually minus 0 0.76 volt, okay? All right, now the moment we see minus, we are confused that why, what does this minus mean? Why do we have minus? You know why we have minus, the minus, what does it mean? This minus, the significance of this, this, this minus sign is that the hydrogen is more stable than the reduced form of Zn. What is the reduced form? Zn2 plus. Zn2 plus is the reduced form. That means that, okay, I'm going to explain it to you, okay? See, what am I writing here? I am writing here, I'm going to write it here. Please check it out here. I'm writing that. H2 is more, H2 is more stable than reduced, reduced form of Zn, okay. H2 is more stable than reduced form of Zn, okay. What does this mean? This means that, this means that if I have, if I have Zn2, Zn2, Zn2 plus, this will be visible, this you will be able to see. But if you ever want Zn2 plus to Zn, yes, this you will not be able to see. This you will not be able to see, okay. This you will not be able to see like in, in terms of in uh, in case of copper we saw that copper 2 plus ion was easily able to grab two electrons and get converted to zinc uh, get converted to copper solid form but that we do not see in case of zinc zinc ions will not be able to grab electrons and go to the zinc solid form whereas they are always able to you know get rid of electrons and get rid of electrons and they will form Zn2 plus. Not understanding. Let me tell you a story. Tell me something everybody. Story time. Story time. Okay. Forget about whatever is written here. I know I'm covering but chill. It's okay. I'll give you the PDF. Ajay, tell me something. Bachu. Now, what will actually happen? Ambani ji. Everybody knows. Reliance Digital. Ambani ji. Right. Tell me something that 
do you think ambani ji will give me a job or should i go and like are ambani you don't meet me only i have a job for you par i'll, I'll par hour i'll give you 50 rupees what will happen if i go and say this his bodyguards will pick me up and throw me like this right how dare you <laughs> how dare you give a job to ambani ji that's what they will say right correct everybody so understanding that ambani ji does not want a job he has his own business i want a job which is why i'm working here right you getting my point so that means that zinc will always give away electron zinc is not someone who will take electrons just like how ambani ji does not take a job he gives a job he is like i am setting up a new company you guys are welcome to join my company only if you are great in your studies you getting my point so zinc is that rich fellow zinc is ambani ji who does not like taking electron he will always give you electron like you take it you take it you be happy i don't want I don't want. Yes, all right. So that means that that means that in case of zinc, this reduced form we will not see. We will see Z in two plus, but we will not see zinc solid form when the reaction is going on. Understood? That is the significance of this minus sign here. Hmm. Everybody understood? Yes. So a metal with less stable reduced form like zinc. Let me write that down here. a metal with less stable reduced form will not undergo reduction will not undergo reduction it will obviously undergo oxidation that is why oxidation at anode zinc can be the anode so if i take zinc as cathode i will not be able to see the reduced form are you getting my point guys yes do you all understand now do you all understand now now if you want this picture is from your ncert everybody this picture is from ncert all these terms that you see are positive all these terms wherever you see the positive value that means that their reduced form are possible yes see fluorine fluorine has the highest positive value guys 2.87 okay fluorine has the highest reduction potential so fluorine's reduced form you will be able to see co3 plus is there see 1.81 h2o2 1.72 so like that if you keep going on now check here see zinc zinc has what Minus point seven six. See Fe two plus plus Fe two plus. Will you be able to see the reduced form? No, because why? This is negative again. Minus point two five. So whatever has a negative, for them you will not be able to see the reduced form. But whatever has positive, positive, you will be able to see the reduced form. Easy peasy, everyone. Till now is everything clear? Till now is everything clear, everybody? Yes. are we absolutely happy with how we are able to complete the syllabus yes got it everyone got it great chalo moving on then moving on let's take a look at another question okay let's take a look at another question this time the question is check it out an electrochemical cell has two half cell reactions a2 plus plus 2e two electron here this will be this will be a uh, electron here okay this will be two E minus, okay. This will be two E minus. Got it? So it is A two plus plus two E minus gives you A, and the E naught value is given to you as zero point three four. Okay. Then you have X two X two plus plus two electron E naught value is given to you as two point three seven. Basically, we don't have to do much. Yes, we don't have to do much. All we have to do is check it out. All we are going to do is E cell is equal to E cell is equal to E naught A. Yes, E naught A two plus A. Yes, and minus E naught X two plus two E. Right? Yes. Or we can write it as X two plus two X. Yes. Now that means that. That means that. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Guys, you have to understand that here this is two point three seven, right? Here it is two point three seven. But am I going to write it as two point three seven? You know why not? Because the reaction is basically the reaction is basically x two plus plus two electron is equal to x, and that 
at that point the e naught value will become minus 2.37 hmm. okay so now what we do is now what are we going to do is x2 plus 2x yes yes absolutely correct absolutely correct so now my e naught e cell will be now my e cell will be 0 0.1 second 0 0.34 minus minus 2.37 yes if you just add it what will you get you will be getting it as 2.71 volt that means that option a is the correct answer okay option a is the correct answer check it out everybody check it out what i meant here understood everybody this is clear this is clear to you all understood yes okay great then let's move on and now it is the most important most important equation of this whole chapter that is nonst equation so chalo let's take a look at nonst equation now guys all these while when we were talking about uh, you know when, when we were talking about like how to how to uh, calculate the e naught cell and all of these right did you realize that we were always talking about one molar, one molar, one molar? Everything was at unity. Standard electrode potential, standard reduction potential, right? Everything was at unity. But, I mean, in reality, you must have, uh, you know, read questions where there is 5 molar solution, 10 molar solution. How are we going to solve these kind of questions? And that is why the nonst equation is right here in front of us so let's talk about nonst equation first let me uh, first le let me write the equation because it, it is uh, slightly complicated yeah slightly looks very complicated but once i explain i think it will be very uh, easy peasy biryani tasty for you okay all right and also please be very attentive because uh, nonst equation is not just important for your boards but also for your je je mains je advanced and all the other competitive exam that you are going to sit in Nonst equation is very, very, very absolutely important, everybody. Okay. All right. So don't let your mind go here and there. Don't get distracted. Right here, everybody. Focus up. Okay. So what we write is E. E. Then we are writing here M. N plus 2 M. Right. This is what is happening. Is equal to E naught. Yes. E naught. M n plus 2m okay all right minus rt yes minus rt divided by nf okay ln ln that is natural log then you write here m and then divided by m n plus okay all right Yes. Now, what are all these terms? What are all these terms? Let's find it out and let's write it down, everybody. Yes. So, let's write it down one by one. First of all, what is R, guys? R, everybody knows that it is the gas constant, right? R is the gas constant. That is 8.314 joule per Kelvin per mole. Okay. This is your gas constant. What is T? Everybody knows T is your temperature. Yes, T is your temperature. But temperature in Kelvin. Yes, temperature in Kelvin, my dear student. Okay. All right. Yes. Then we have N. What is this N? This N is the number of electrons that are taking part. Okay. Number of electrons that are taking part in the reaction. So, number of electrons that are taking part yes now what is this capital f this capital f is obviously faraday's constant faraday's constant yes and of course it's a number what is the number the number actually is 96487 uh, yes per mole however you can also write it as 96500 okay you can also write it as 96500 just for the just for the ease of calculations okay now what is this m guys what is this m the one that is written on the top in the in the numerator this is the concentration of this is the concentration of solid which is equal to everybody one right the concentration of solid is one and this is your concentration of m yes concentration of m that is in the reactant side all right everybody yes now 
that means that what actually is my uh, this thing what what does my equation become my equation this whole equation that i wrote here this equation becomes because i have written a concentration of solid concentration of solid is, is equal to 1 so that means that my actual equation becomes e m n plus just let me write it down i'll move on i'll move on i'll move more move from here okay yes is equal to e not m n plus 2 m minus r t divided by n f l n 1 divided by m n plus yes makes sense guys so this is this becomes my equation my equation becomes this okay my equation becomes this all right guys now okay before i move on just take a look just take a look and tell me if you are understanding this or not yes just tell me if you are understanding this basically i have just written the nernst equation and i have explained what each of these terms are okay so now through because of this nernst equation we will be able to calculate the e cell at any other concentration any or whatsoever concentration that we are we might be given in the question we will we will be able to solve it okay but is it still going to be this confusing? Is it still going to be this confusing? This confusing? Now, you know what? We can change it a little bit. How about, we were talking about Daniel cell, Daniel cell, Daniel cell for a very long time, isn't it? How about, let's apply this in Daniel cell. Let's apply this equation that we have just found out. Let's apply that in the Daniel cell, okay? Apply it in Daniel cell. Apply in Daniel cell and what will we get? If we apply it in Daniel's cell, what is it that we will expect to get? Okay, let's write it for the cathode first. Let's write it for cathode first. What will happen in the cathode area? In the cathode, it will be Cu 2 plus 2 Cu. Okay, we are writing reduction potential, my dear student. Be very careful. Not oxidation potential. Cu 2 plus 2 Cu. So that means that E naught Cu 2 plus 2 Cu minus rt divided by n then capital f natural log of 1 divided by cu2 plus am i right yes this is our daniel cell reaction now what is going to happen at anode let's write that down also for anode it will be e zn2 plus 2zn correct yes reduction potential we are writing so that means that it will be e naught e naught Zn2 plus 2 Zn minus Rt Nf natural log of 1 divided by Zn2 plus. Clear? Works for you? Okay. Now what do we know is E cell? What is the what is the what is E cell? What is the formula for E cell? Very easy. Yes, E cell is equal to as we know it is going to be E naught. E naught Cu2 plus Cu minus E naught Zn2 plus 2 Zn works. Now let's put that here. Let's put this here everybody. Let's put this whole thing here everybody. Okay. Yes. So what are we going to do? Here we are going to write it as E naught Cu2 plus 2 Cu minus Rt divided by Nf Ln of 1 by Cu. 2 plus works. Yes. Makes sense. Makes sense. This is what I'm writing. See how I'm der I'm deriving it everyone. I'm deriving it right in front of you. Now what I'm doing is E naught Zn 2 plus 2 Zn minus RT N capital F. Sorry. Cap N then capital F. Ln 1 divided by Zn 2 plus. Correct. Yes. All right. Now let's simplify this a little bit more. Let's simplify this a little bit more. How do we simplify that? Let's write E cell is equal to, E cell is equal to, can we take some common terms from here? We can, right? Yes. So we are going to write it as, we are going to write it as E naught Cu2 plus 2 Cu. Yes. Minus, do you see here minus? Yes. So let's write that here. E naught Zn2 plus 2 Zn. Okay. Let's take this as common. Then we can take RT divided by NF to be common, right? We can do that. RT divided by NF common. And then what I can do is ln of 1 by, ln of 1 by Cu2 plus, yes, uh, minus ln of 1 by Zn2 plus. 
Can I do that? Yes, I am doing it. Now, you know what? In mathematics, you must have read, you must have uh, read that there is this, um, there is this property of natural log. Ln of A minus Ln of B can be written as Ln of A by B. Okay. Yes. This is what? This is nothing but E naught of cell. This is just E naught cell. Correct. This is just E naught cell. And I'm saying that there is a property like this. Ln A minus Ln B is equal to Ln of A divided by B. Okay. All right. This is a natural log property. So let's apply this here. Let's apply this here and let's derive the formula a little bit more. So now what are we going to get guys? Now what are we going to get? This term, this whole term becomes your E naught cell. This whole term becomes your E naught cell. So we are writing it as E naught cell minus RT NF. Yes. Now what am I going to do? What am I going to do everybody? Check it out. I'm going to write it as LN here. Okay. LN and then I can write it as ZN2 plus C. C. Uh, ln a minus ln b right okay here is a mistake that i've made is ln a minus ln b when we write it will be ln b by a okay yes this is your this is the property so what i'm going to do is i am going to write it as zn2 plus divided by cu2 plus okay and this my dear student is the Nernst equation for Daniel's cell. This is your Nernst equation for Daniel cell. But we are not going to talk about Daniel cell all the time, right? Yes, we are not going to uh, talk about Daniel cell all the time. time. This is your Dan Daniel cell. So what is the in general Nernst equation? The in general Nernst equation is my dear student, E cell is equal to Everybody have a look. E naught cell minus RT by NF. Okay. LN. What do we write? What do we write? We will write. So basically uh, the reaction is usually right. The reaction is usually AA plus BB gives you C, C capital plus small d and then capital D. Whatever is the coefficient. These are the coefficient, right? These are the coefficients. So what do we write? We write it as capital C to the power C. Okay. We write it as capital D to the power small d divided by capital B to the power small b and capital A to the power small a. So this, my dear student, is the most important formula that you have to remember and this is your Nernst equation in general. Okay, this is the in general, general Nernst equation formula. So, so I'm just stepping, stepping aside. Please have a look everybody. Please have a look and let me know if you are all able to understand this or not. Okay, all right. Please have a look everybody. It starts from here. It starts from here. So what we have done is, okay, explaining this again, what we have done is we have written the Nernst equation first. Okay, this is the formula. From this formula, I have told you what are the terms here. What is R, what is T, what is N, what is F, everything I have told you. And we know that concentration of solid becomes unity. Okay, concentration of solid becomes unity. Once we know this, from here we derived this. Okay, we derived this equation. Basically, it's just in the numerator we have written 1. Okay, once we are done with this, now what we have done is we have applied that in the Daniel cell because we spoke about Daniel cell for a very long time, right? We kept talking about Daniel cell, Daniel cell, Daniel cell. So, we have just applied this formula in the Daniel cell. Once we have applied in the Daniel cell, we got to know that we got to know here that we have basically just derived, right? Some of the terms we have taken it as common, some of the terms we have taken it as common in this side, right? Once we have done this, then we applied one ln formula, ln property. ln means natural log. We have just taken one natural log property and we have, we have just simplified it a little bit more. Then we finally found the Nernst equation for Daniel cell and then after Daniel cell we have written that in general a chemical equation in general reaction in general the reactions are basically somewhat like this AA plus BB gives you CC plus DD right once we have written that from there in the numerator side you have the product you have the product and their concentrations and the denominator you have the reactants and their concentration right so once you have written then then you have the Nernst equation completely 
Now that we have learned this nonst equation, do you think that there is an application also, or are we just passing our time and learning this? No, obviously we have application as well. So what are the application of nonst equation? Let's talk about it. Number one, first thing is that you can find EMF of the cell. Okay, what can you find? You can find EMF of the cell. Okay, EMF of the cell. How can you find EMF of the cell at any given concentration? Basically, that's why we have introduced Nernst equation, right? Because we want to find out, we want to find out EMF of the cell. We want to find, we want to calculate at any other random concentration. So we can find EMF of the cell. But how do we do that? How do we do that? Once again, guys, all we have to do is just use the Nernst equation here. Okay, what are we going to do? It is basically E cell. E cell is equal to E cell is equal to E naught cell minus R T by N F L N. Okay, natural law. Yes, something uh, here here you can write it as uh, here you can write it as uh, C capital then small then you have capital D and D here and then okay let's just write it like this let's just write it like this okay. Now, from here, what you can do is, from here, understand that, please understand, please take a look at it, have, have a look, have a look, everyone. Don't you think that, don't you think that this ln, this ln, R, T, and F, this whole term, all of them are constant. R is constant, T is constant, F is constant, right? These are all numbers. Yes, and natural log also, I can change it to log, and then what will I get? What will I get here? I, here, I will get it as E0 cell is minus okay rt ln and f okay this if i put all the values do you know what you will get you will get minus 0 0.059 divided by n yes log log same thing write it c c d d a a and b to the power b okay this will be how you will calculate the emf of the cell okay this is how you calculate emf of the cell now that's not it nernst equation can also be nernst equation can also be used to uh, find equilibrium constant for a reaction okay what can you find from here you can find the equilibrium constant okay all right let's write that here find equilibrium constant okay how do we calculate equilibrium constant now yes and ma'am we were not talking about equilibrium constant at all but tell me something that all this while when we were talking about the daniel cell do you remember that at certain point what will happen is the zinc 2 plus ions concentration will increase and cu2 plus will keep reducing right and there will be a point of time when the voltmeter is not showing any i mean not showing any change in the read and at that point of time it will be our equilibrium constant okay at that point of time what will we have at that point of time we will have equilibrium constant my dear student okay all right so let's take a look at it how to calculate this how to calculate this okay let's let's do this everybody Chal. so here what are we doing First of all, at equilibrium, we know that E cell is supposed to be zero. But even before that, what is Daniel cell, guys? Daniel cell, what is happening in Daniel cell? What is happening in Daniel cell? Tell me. As you can see, what is happening in Daniel cell, everybody? We know that in Daniel cell, the reaction goes somewhat like this. Zn plus Cu2 plus, yes, gives you, yes, Zn2 plus plus see you am i right yes now i have also added this this you know what do you call it this symbol yeah just to, just to show that this is equilibrium right this is my equilibrium all right yes i'm gonna do that and now i know that at equilibrium at equilibrium my e cell is equal to zero okay now let's write the nernst equation what is our nernst equation our nernst equation is e cell is equal to E naught cell minus, yes, E naught cell minus RT divided by NF, yes. Then you write LN here and then what do we write here? ZN2 plus divided by Cu2 plus, correct? 
Yes. Yes, this is our this is our Nernst equation. But what are the things that I already know? I know that this is equal to zero, right? This is equal to zero. So now what I can write is I can write it as E naught cell minus. Now this ln, can I change this ln, this natural log to log? Let's calculate it as log. Okay. If that is the case, then what will I write is I will write it as 2.303 RT divided by NF. Remember? Yes. I will write it as log now. Log Zn2 plus divided by Cu2 plus. Now, my dear students, tell me that what exactly is this term, this Zn2 plus divided by Cu2 plus. Don't you think that this is my Kc that is equilibrium constant? This is my Kc that is equilibrium constant. Yes. Now that I have figured out that this is my Kc, so that becomes, that makes my equation to be E0 cell, I'm taking E0 cell in the left hand side, okay. Now when I take E0 cell in the left hand side, I will get it as, check it out here, 2.303 RT, yes, divided by NF multiplied with log Kc, this whole Zn2 plus, Zn2 plus divided by Cu2 plus, I've taken it as Kc. So log of Kc I can write and you know that this 2.303 RT and F, all of that are constant. So I can just put the number and calculate. If you put that number, then what will you get? Once again, you will get it as 0 0.059 divided by, check it out, 0 0.059 divided by N. What is N? The number of electrons taking part. Yes, N log Kc. And that is how you calculate equilibrium constant. Okay, that is how you will be calculating equilibrium constant. Got it, everybody? Yes. Now, the same thing for when, when you do it for, I mean, we were doing it for Daniel cell. When you do it for Daniel cell, you know that n is equal to 2, right? You know that n is equal to 2, correct? Well, you know that n is equal to 2. And from the voltmeter, from the voltmeter reading, you will find that, uh, uh, that, that, that uh, it, it is 1.1V, uh, 1.1 volt, right? From the voltmeter reading, you will calculate 1.1 volt. From here, you can calculate log Kc how C. Log Kc will be equal to 1.1. That is the voltmeter reading. I am not telling you the reading. Yes, I'm uh, sorry. I'm just telling you the reading, but the voltmeter will actually be giving you the reading and that is 1.1. This you can remember, guys, that uh, for Daniel cell, it will be 1.1 volt. Okay, so 1.1 multiplied with 2 divided by 0, 0.0. 5, 9, if you calculate, then you will get log Kc value will be 37.288. Okay. Log Kc for Daniel cell will be 37.288. If you want, you can remember it. Otherwise, no need also. It's okay. Even if you don't remember it. Okay. All right, everybody. Now, the last one. Okay. There is another one thing that we can calculate. And that is that. That is that. With Nernst equation, with the help of Nernst equation, we can also calculate, find the Gibbs free energy. Okay. We can find out, find Gibbs free energy. Let's write that down here. We can calculate Gibbs free energy. Where have you studied Gibbs free energy? Thermodynamics chapter. Okay. And the formula is delta G is equal to delta H. Sorry. Delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. Remember, that is the formula, gibbs helmholtz equation. Yes. Now, if delta G is greater than 0, then we know that the reaction is non-spontaneous. If delta G is equal to 0, that means the reaction is at equilibrium. And if delta G is lesser than 0, then the reaction is spontaneous. Right? We know this. So, from here, I'm just going to directly tell you the formula. You, you can remember the formula. No need for uh, derivations here. So, delta G is equal to minus NFE cell. Yes, minus NFE cell. All right. And from here, you will be able to understand something very important. That is that if delta G is equal to negative, yes, then what will happen? E cell will be positive. Okay. E cell will be positive. All right. If delta G is equal to positive, then our E cell is going to be negative. Okay. Then our E cell is going to be 
negative everybody all right yes and from here also you know the basic story about everything okay this is what i told you right what i told you remember abhi right now only i told you that if delta g is uh, greater than 0 so that means if delta g is if delta g is greater than 0 that is positive then it will be non spontaneous delta g is equal to 0 e cell will be 0 then that means that the reaction is in equilibrium if delta g is less than 0 that is negative then the e cell will be positive and it will be a spontaneous so everything is tabulated here and this is the formula that you have to remember this is the formula that you have to remember. Baki everything you know, what is Faraday's constant, what is delta G, delta G is the Gibbs, free, Gibbs energy of the reaction, E is the EMF of the cell, yes, NF is, where is N, N is the number of electrons taking part, F is Faraday's constant. So basically you know all these things, right? Basically you know all these things. So now, time for a question. Shall we do a question guys? Yeah, let's do a question. Let's solve a question. Otherwise, how will we understand what is going on in our life, isn't it? Chal. So the question is for the reduction of silver ions, okay, the question is for the reduction of silver ions with copper metal, the standard cell potential was found to be plus 0.46 volt at 225 degrees Celsius. The value of standard Gibbs energy G will be if F is given to you as 96,500. See, I told you for the sake of calculation, you do that. Okay. So what is our, uh, yes, okay. So, how are we going to solve it? We are going to solve it as Cu, okay, copper metal, Cu plus 2Ag plus, right, Cu plus 2Ag plus silver ions will give us, yes, will give us Cu2 plus plus Ag, correct, yes, all right. So, we can clearly see that here N is equal to 2, N is equal to 2 because 2 plus, yes, number of electrons N is equal to 2. And we know that the formula is delta G is equal to minus NFE cell, right? Minus NFE cell, correct? And uh, G is the standard gives energy and E is given to you, right? E is given to you, E is equal to plus 0 0.46 volt that is given to you. Check it out everybody, yes? Alright, so what I have to do is my delta G is equal to, delta G will be equal to minus minus uh, 2 multiplied with 96500 multiplied with E cell is 0 0.46. Please calculate this and tell me what is the answer. I think the answer should be option A. Yes, the answer is option A everybody. It will come up to minus 89.0 kilojoule. But however, what I want you to do is please solve it on your own and see if this is the answer that you're getting. But I, I think that this is the answer you should be getting. Okay, this is the answer that you should be getting. Cool everybody. Yes. Now, what are we going to do is, whoa, with this, all of this solid part is done. Now, we have to go to conductance of electrolytic solution and we are going to get introduced to some very famous law that is like uh, molar conductivity. We're going to talk about Kolrash law and all of that. So, ready, steady? Let's go, guys. All right. Starting with conductance of electrolytic electrolytic solution but before we start with that or before even we understand all of this tell me something what does conductance means i'm pretty sure that all of you will be able to tell me that conductance basically means the ability to conduct isn't it yes what does it mean it means that the ability to conduct like maybe there is a material there is a substance it can be anything it can be a metal it can be an ion it can be a solution anything but the ability to conduct is your conductance correct yes so now when you're talking about electrolytic solution, basically we are going to talk about a solution in which there are electrolytes present, right? And we are going to measure the conductance of that solution. But before we measure conductance, do you know what is opposite of conductance? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that you all know. It is what? Resistance. Correct, my dear students. Yes, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about resistance. Yes. Resistance is the opposite of conductance, correct? So now when we talk about resistance, what do we understand? Resistance is basically the measuring of, yes, the measure of opposition to current flow. Yes, measure of the opposition to current flow in an electrical circuit. That means that in an electrical circuit, the current wants to flow this way, but there is an opposition. There is something that is trying to stop it. And that is called as your resistance, right? Yes, 
yes how do we, what do we say what do we say it is the opposition yes opposition to current flow opposition to current flow in a circuit measurement yes that is your resistance correct everybody yes how do we represent it let me write that down also i hope that you all are able to see it right yes okay let me let me just move this side so that you all are able to see it i'm still not used to this <laughs> whole board but yeah i'm trying i'm trying so how do we represent it representation is done by obviously representation is done by representation by capital r okay all right how is it measured it is measured in ohm okay ohm that is this is the symbol of o all right and what is the formula the formula my dear student is r is equal to rho div rho l by a okay r is equal to rho l by a what is rho rho my dear students is called as the resistivity or the specific resistance what is it it is called as resistivity or you can also call it as specific resistance okay all right yes till this much is everything clear till this much is everything clear all right yes now what is l l is obviously obviously the length of the wire a is the cross sectional area of the wire normally when we are trying to measure it in a in a, in a metallic wire that's that's when we talk about l and a right however in here it is going to change just wait up in here it is going to change it a change a little bit so if you have understood resistance now can you also understand conductance because obviously resistance is just the just the opposite of conductance isn't it yes it is just the inverse of resistance so let's let's talk about now conductance here okay let's talk about conductance conductance is inverse of resistance conductance is inverse of resistance okay very easily we can say that right i mean we are talking a little bit about physics here so check it out conductance is inverse of resistance everybody all right guys yes cool hai all right how do we represent it now this time we are representation is by representation by check it out by the the letter g okay capital g resistance by capital g okay now here the unit unit can be unit can be mo m h o which is basically nothing but ohm inverse or we also like to measure it in siemens okay siemens siemens whatever you want to say siemens okay s i e m e n s siemens capital s basically okay all right yes so you can also write it like this ohm to the power inverse that is mo it can it is also pronounced as mo sometimes yeah this is weird right <laughs> mo but yeah 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 that's how we that's how we pronounce it so that that means that now conductivity or this capital g conductance that we were talking about what is the formula going to be the formula is going to be capital g is equal to here we have to introduce a new term what is the new term basically i can write it as 1 by rho 1 by rho a divided by l i told you right it is inverse of resistance see it is written here that it is inverse of resistance now this whole term this whole term 1 by rho i can write it as kappa i'm introducing a new term here kappa but kappa a divided by l and this becomes my this kappa becomes what this kappa becomes my conductivity okay this becomes my conductivity just like how in this case you have read that this was the rho was resistivity like that in here you have conductivity which is your kappa kappa is a greek letter word by the way don't don't say that it is k it is not k it is kappa all right now based on this based on how the substances conduct how the substances resist we have different classification of substances right we have conductors we have insulators we have semiconductors and these are the things that we have learnt in our junior grades conductors are those who have very large conductivity as in they can conduct a they can conduct right yes examples are metals examples are alloys right these are all our conductors then we have insulators that do not conduct for example uh, for example uh, plastic wood glass these do not conduct that means that they have a high resistivity okay they have high resistivity they do not conduct 
and then we have semiconductors which you can obviously common sense it has kicked in right now and we know that the conductivity is between the insulators and conductors it's not very high conductivity it's not very high resistivity either it, it falls somewhere in the between right yes and then in our lower grades we have also studied about metallic conductors if you remember correct everybody we have read about metallic conductors isn't it what are metal metallic conductors metallic conductors obviously are metals but choose yes metallic conductors are metals right in metallic conductors or let's just say metals in metals who are the conductors who are these people who are conducting of course the valence electrons the electrons in the last shell they are free because the nucleus is not able to catch hold of them very easily so they are free and they keep running dun 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 dun, right and they are the ones who play the key role in metallic conductors correct yes now what does it depend on the metallic conductor does not only depend on the valence electrons but it also depends on the nature and the structure of the metal right yes what is the nature of the metal which they obviously even in metals there are ones that are very good conductors and there are those ones which are slightly little less conductors correct all the metals are do not have similar type of conductance right yes of course it depends on number of valence electrons per atom that is present and one very important thing is that it depends on temperature as you increase the temperatures metallic conductance yes the conductance of a metal it actually decreases. do you know why because okay let's understand that in a in a, in a, in a let's say that we, we take a block of a metal okay we take a block of a metal metal in the block of a metal i know that there are atoms 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 now at this point when the metal is conducting it's the electrons that have a random movement or they are moving and they are conducting the atoms are ideally not moving or even if they are moving they move at their own position right they usually vibrate we know that in a solid they have vibratory motion correct yes now when you increase the temperature what is happening try to understand here when you increase the temperature my dear student now the atoms have also gathered some amount of energy and now they want to move very rapidly and they want to move in a random motion when they do that the conductance decreases because now the electrons don't know how to move now the atoms they do not know themselves how to move so all of these has changed then we come to ionic solution we have to talk about right so i am reaching there this is the storytelling part now before we reach to ionic solution you have to understand that just like metallic conductance there is something called as electrolytic conductance of course they are not absolutely similar otherwise why would we have a new name right so in case of electrolytic conductance what happens is that the conductance of electricity by ions that are present in a solution in a solution who are the conductors it's the ions like if i put nacl in the solution then na plus cl minus these are the ions the cations and the anion they are going to conduct yes so that means that the nacl is the electrolyte here yes and the nacl it has broken down into ions so the ions have become the conductance and that is your ionic conductance okay all right so conductance of ionic solution this is where it starts and what does it depend on let's talk about that okay so what does it depend on what does conductivity of ionic solution depend on number one number one is nature of solvent nature of solvent what are you taking are you taking water are you taking alcohol are you taking oil what is it that you are taking so the nature of solvent decides the ionic conductance yes of course definitely not to forget the nature of the electrolyte or nature of the solute yes so nature of electrolyte let's write okay nature of electrolyte number three what does what else does it depend on it also depends on the size of the ions produced my dear student and their solvation okay so uh, let's write uh, size of the ions okay size of the ions everybody number four it also depends on concentration of course of course of course don't you know that if in if i have a glass of water and if i add one spoon of salt versus if i have the same amount of water and if i put three spoonfuls of salt then obviously the three spoon salt will be more conducting in nature that means as concentration increases 
conductance also increases but about that a little later because that is slightly complicated which we will understand in some time okay all right so concentration of the solute basically concentration of electrolyte let's write here just so that you don't confuse yourself all right of course not to forget that temperature is also is temperature will also try and work its magic here everybody all right so with this note what are the things that we have understood we have understood that in metallic conductivity in case of metallic conductance it's the electrons that carry the current yes whereas in case of the electrolytic conductivity in this case we know that it's the electrolyte or the ions are the current carriers all right yes in the metallic conductor what happens is that the metal is under the influence of a electric potential which is why it is carrying the current in this case it is the electrolytes that are under the influence of a potential difference and that is why they are carrying the current okay metallic conductivity what happens is as temperature increases conductivity decreases whereas in this case if the temperature increases then conductivity also increases okay conductivity also increases now do you think that this ionic solution is also going to have absolutely similar conductance like the metal no in this case we are going to expect what do we expect we expect low conductivity okay what do we expect we expect here low conductivity it is not going to be as conducting as a metal okay it is not going to be as conducting as a metal all right yes now in this case when we try to measure the conductance of ionic solution do you think that it is as simple as easy as just connecting the solution to the electric uh, circuit no no we do face some challenges okay we do face some challenges here and what are the challenges we cannot use direct current here that means we cannot just connect it to a battery why because the moment we connect it to a battery the moment we connect it to a dc what happens is the composition of the solution will change because you know that in the batteries in the in the dc current the batteries have some chemical those chemicals for the moment they start to flow what will happen the composition of the solution will change so we cannot do that so what do we have to do here here we will have to use okay here we will have to use alternating current that is ac source you will have to use okay what do we have to use you have to use ac source and are you just going to take the solution and put it in the circuit no here you have to use a specifically designed these are all all of these are completely and absolutely there in your ncrt once you are done with the chapter then please go back and read it otherwise if you have already read it well and good but if you haven't then don't try to read it now because many things might be a little confusing for you so just listen here okay all right so what are we going to do we're going to use a a specially designed or specifically designed i'm writing okay specifically yes specifically designed specifically designed vessel yes specifically designed vessel called what what do you think what do you think conductivity cell but choose what do we call it we call it to be conductivity cell now you are going to ask me ma'am how does this cell look like oh, okay how does this cell look like let's draw it here okay let's draw it here drawing might take me a little time but you so please don't mind me okay please don't mind me here it's somewhat like this somewhat like uh yeah some somewhat like this only right also my drawing is not that very good so please 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 just bear with my drawing yeah <laughs> okay all right this kind of looks like crab now but i promise it's not crab okay all right yes um oh we still have to connect it we still have to connect it like this yeah are you all able to see it yeah yeah you can see it okay so this is our conducting wire this is our conducting wire okay this is a this is a this is the conductivity cell here now in this what is happening is these two rods that you see yes these two electrodes that you see they are basically platinized electrodes 
platinized electrodes what did i say they are your platinized electrodes okay both of them both of them all right and here in between these two parts you have a length of l okay and in this you will have water filled in this there will be water or or basically the electro the solution will be here okay the solution will be here all right yes everybody now these two platinized electrodes right these two these two electrodes are coated with platinum so we call it as platinized electrode all right now the electrodes these two electrodes that you have just between these two you will have the solution the solution will be confined between these two electrodes okay so if i have these two electrodes then the solution is right between these two okay all right yes now tell me something now does it look like a cylindrical shape something it does look like yes now that we have something like cylindrical shape so can i once again say that my resistance is equal to rho l divided by a where l is this length between the two electrodes and a is the cross sectional area yes a is the cross sectional area right now if i have to write this in terms of conductivity i have just written it in the form of resistance if i want to write this in the form of conductivity then what am i going to do you know the answer you know the answer yes are we not going to write it as r is equal to 1 divided by kappa l by a which is nothing but l divided by kappa multiplied with a can i write it like this yes and now what happens here is please have a look everybody please have a look this l by a term is there right this l by a term it is constant for a conductivity cell for a particular conductivity cell the l and the a you are not going to change it hence we like to call it as cell constant okay what do we call it we call it as cell constant okay all right we call it as cell constant now we have to understand the variation of now we have to understand another term which is basically the uh, variation of conductivity and molar conductivity and we will also understand molar conductivity in some time but the point is that why did we have to introduce this molar conductivity why was it that only conductivity was not enough that's because when we started measuring conductivity we came across some challenges what were the challenges the challenges were the fact that the conductivity of solutions of different electrolytes in absolutely the same solvent you take the same solvent you take same solvent as water but when you try to measure it with different electrolytes at same at at a given temperature at a given temperature you will see differences what were the differences the charge and the size of the ions in which they dissolve in which they dissociate that was different concentration of ions were different the ease with which the ions move under the potential gradient that was different yes and because of these challenges what did i say i said three challenges everybody the three challenges are the conductivity of solutions yes the conductivity of solutions even if you take same solvent let's just say that we have taken same solvent water but what i have done is i have taken different electrolyte kcl nacl mgso4 right same temperature i have uh, i have taken but we could see that the charge and the size of the ions in which they dissociate that was different the concentration of ions that was different the ease with which the ions move under a potential difference that was also great that was also different yes and that means that that means that we needed a new you know we needed a new term which could make our life easier because you know in chemistry or even in any of the sciences we don't want random things we always always like things that are streamlined for us that are standard process for us isn't it yes everybody that is why we brought that is why we brought this new term called as molar conductivity why just so that just so that that just so that that we can make this whole conductivity this conductivity can be a little more effective okay all right so what did i say to make you probably are not able to see to make conductivity more effective conductivity more effective molar conductivity has been introduced yes 
all right and what are the three things that i say please write it down if you want you can write it down concentration of ions were different the charge and the size of the ions in which they dissociate that was different and the ease with which they were moving under a potential different a potential gradient that was also different okay all right so coming back to the formula that we have just studied some time back which was r is equal to rho l divided by a correct yes and if i want to write it in terms of conductance conductance i said not conductivity be very careful by the way here what was happening is that now we have figured out right that now now we have the whole term right l divided by kappa by a right and you remember that uh, in physics you have read about wheatstone bridge in which stone bridge what will you do you will take two known resistance then there will be a third resistance and there will be this fourth one which is unknown absolutely so you can calculate with the with the help of the wheat stone you can calculate the resistance of this as well okay you can do that so that part you can just read it from ncrt this is very easy peasy i don't think much explanation is needed here but you can just go ahead and read it from ncrt okay so now coming back to this we know that r is equal to rho l by a but if i want to introduce a new term here which is my conductance i will write it as 1 by capital g which was my conductance do you remember here do you remember here yes see representation by r for resistance representation of representation by of conductance is given by capital g right yes so i'm writing it as 1 by g what is g g is my conductance just sometime back only we have read it but yeah still writing it 1 by g is your conductance g is your conductance so how do i write it for g i can write it as 1 by kappa l divided by a i can write it like this and i know that l by a is my cell constant right now coming to conductivity what what if i want to write it in terms of conductivity if i want to uh, write it in terms of conductivity which is nothing but my kappa so my kappa will be equal to l divided by r will go here and kappa will go here so l divided by r by a right which is nothing but 1 by r multiplied with l by a and l by a is my cell constant so what can i write i can write it as cell constant divided by resistance that will give you the conductivity that is kappa now let's try to make this conductivity a little more effective and let's talk about here molar conductivity so changing the color yes what is molar conductivity molar conductivity is why is it more effective let's talk about that okay so we are going to talk about molar conductivity now and what is a molar conductivity let's understand that everybody okay what is molar conductivity writing it down here conductivity for one molar solution what is molar conductivity conductivity for one molar solution okay for one molar solution that is we are what are we talking in terms of concentration yes yeah. for one molar solution conductivity for one molar solution is your molar conductivity how do we write or how do we denote molar conductivity we write it as lambda m guys this is lambda but like i said in yesterday's problem solving class as well lambda m is basically this is your capital letter this is your capital letter lambda okay this is your capital letter lambda so lambda m is your molar conductivity which is nothing but which is nothing but your conductivity that is kappa okay which is nothing but your conductivity kappa see look at the definition conductivity for one molar solution so kappa divided by c what is c c is per unit concentration per unit concentration is your c all right now just going to write down the write down the units as well please be very careful of the unit what is kappa's unit kappa's unit is siemens meter to the power minus 1 yes what is c c here is mole to the power mole meter per cube okay mole meter per cube so if a dot in the exam they try to mix and match two chapters that is some basic concepts of uh, chemistry or solutions and electrochemistry then le let me tell you that if they give you molarity and you have to figure it out yes then what do you do you multiply you you have to just do this that molarity multiplied with 1000 l meter cube this will give you the solution okay this will give you the solution understood everybody we will be doing some questions but wait up wait up yes wait up 
Now let's understand the variation of conductivity and molar conductivity. Okay, I was supposed to write here variation of conductivity and molar conductivity, but I filled it out with something else. Okay, I filled it out with something else. So what I'm going to do is just just removing this when I give you the PDF so that you don't get confused here. Just so that you don't get confused here. All right. Yes. So this is basically your molar conductivity just a second guys hmm. what is going on <laughs> okay all right here what do i write this was your molar conductivity This was your molar conductivity. Cool. All right. Now let's talk about let's talk about the variation of molar conductivity and conductivity. So first of all, what was conductivity? We know that conductivity was increasing when you increase the concentration. Do you remember that? Obviously, more amount of salt you put in, what will happen? The conductivity will increase because there are more amount of carriers now more amount of electricity carriers have increased and they are going to do what dun, 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 dun. they will run and they will conduct right but is that the same case for molar conductivity that doesn't happen molar conductivity increases with decrease in concentration so let's write that down here okay all right what did i say i said that Molar conductivity increases with decrease in concentration. Molar conductivity increases with decrease in concentration. But what you have to be very careful is but conductivity Conductivity decreases with decrease in concentration, increases with increase in concentration. Conductivity increases with increase in concentration. So from here we can understand that conductivity is directly proportional to conduct uh, uh, directly proportional to concentration. That means that my Kappa is directly proportional to concentration. Am I right here? Yes. My kappa is directly proportional to concentration. Right? Yes. Now what about conductivity? Molar conductivity. Molar conductivity like I said is it increases with decrease in concentration. Why? Because it is number of ions per unit volume. So as you are adding, what are you adding here? Yes, you are decreasing the concentration. Correct. That means that you are adding more amount of solvent. When you add more amount of solvent, what is happening? The number of ions are still same, right? So the number of ions in per unit volume, understand. So let's say that this is my container. Okay, this is my container here, right? In this container, let's say that this much amount of salt is here and the water is still here. This much amount of salt is here and okay, no, let's say that water is still here and this much amount of salt is here. Now what I did was slowly and steadily I added more water but the salt is still here. The salt is only this much. Now I have added more water. So amount of salt per unit volume that has decreased and that is why molar conductivity increases with decrease in concentration understood this much clear let's move on so now what we have to talk about is now we have to check out the conductivity variation for both strong electrolyte as well as for weak electrolyte okay so let me draw the graph here the graph kind of looks like uh, this if you see the graph will look a little bit like this i mean obviously these are just the axes here this is your c and this will be your kappa okay all right so what is this this is your uh, electrolytic conductivity all right and this is your kappa right now what we see is now what we see is that uh, the graph uh, goes like uh, let me draw it for a weak electrolyte first yes for the weak electrolyte it's like this whereas for the strong electrolyte it's like 
this okay all right so i'm going to write it down here also this is the strong electrolyte and this is for weak electrolyte now strong electrolyte you know strong electrolyte is for kcl yeah kcl is an example of strong electrolyte nacl is an example of strong electrolyte basically what do the strong electrolyte do the moment you dissolve them they break down they dissociate completely right whereas in case of weak electrolyte for example ch3coh acetic acid you will not find them dissociating completely isn't it now if you look at the graph carefully there is a very interesting thing that the graph is telling you and what is it that it is telling you it is telling you that for strong electrolyte you see that there is a very rapid increase isn't it yes my whereas for the weak electrolyte the graph shows that with with increase in concentration conductivity is increasing but it's not very fast do you see the difference do you see the difference it is increasing but not very fast whereas for, whereas for the strong electrolyte you see that it is very fast it's going to the peak very fast why because in case of weak electrolyte you know that the electrolyte does not dissociate completely and now when you are diluting it when you are adding more solvent adding more solvent adding more solvent dissociation starts to happen yes dissociation dissociation is still happening more and more so the number of ions that is per unit volume it increases a little bit yes not not per unit volume sorry the number of ions in the solution they increase however per unit volume it is still decrease all right are you understanding everybody by the way what i missed out on saying is that so we understood molar conductivity and we understood that how to find all of these down right we also understood that molar conductivity increases with decrease in concentration cool this whole concentration concentration term if i just look at it in a little different manner and if i if i start talking about dilution let's talk about dilution i don't want to talk about concentration i want to talk about dilution what is concentration concentration is you adding more electrolyte to it what is dilution dilution is basically adding more solvent to it right yes so when i dilute a substance when i dilute a solution what am i doing i'm adding more solvent which is what i told you here right which is what i told you here in this glass imagine that only this much of salt is there in this glass you just have to imagine that only this much of salt is here and let's say that initially there was only this much water yes there was only this much water so my number of ions per unit volume is a little more right now but if i dilute it more now i have added water till here actually i have added water till here so i'm not able to move the glass a little too much so i have added water till here now what is happening is the number of number of salt ions is still the same so per unit volume it has decreased because i have added more water isn't it hmm now i have reduced it also because i have added more water what did i do i have diluted it so when i dilute my bachus can we very carefully understand that dilution what is dilution guys what is dilution dilution is that the number of ions per unit volume decreases and that is why conductivity decreases right conductivity i said i did not say molar conductivity by the way okay so number of ions number of ions per unit volume decreases yes just with the glass example i showed you that yes hence what will happen hence conductivity decreases conductivity decreases but what what about the molar conductivity everybody we just told you that molar conductivity increases with decrease in concentration yes so that means what are you doing here what are you doing here you have decreased the concentration dilution has happened concentration has decreased so molar conductivity will increase yes and coming back to uh, let me just also write down that what i spoke about this whole graph here yes i have spoken about this whole graph here so what did i speak about the graph in this case you see for the weak electrolyte okay i'm writing it for the weak electrolyte for the weak electrolyte what do you see here for the weak electrolyte we saw that in weak electrolyte as an example example let's take example ch3cooh does not dissociate completely right in a solution ch3cooh does not dissociate completely correct does not dissociate completely 
that we know that we know but when dilution happens yes when when dilution increase increases when dilution increases we also have to understand that dissociation starts to occur okay when dilution increases dissociation increases which means that hence hence what happens number of ions number of ions increase but what is happening it's still decreasing the graph still says that it is decreasing why because even though the dissociation has increased you have increased the number of ions slightly but what is more prominent what is more prominent is the number of ions per unit volume is still decreasing yes but number of ions okay number of ions per unit volume still decreases still decreases and that is why we see that in case of weak electrolyte as well as strong electrolyte you get to see that yes the graph is still decreasing are you understanding everybody is this much clear all right now coming to molar conductivity variation we have just understood that yes conductivity per unit per unit concentration per unit molar solu molar solution that is your molar conductivity right and molar conductivity increases with decrease in concentration that is also something that we have spoken about right what did i say we we already spoke about it we already spoke about it so i'm going to draw it here because i don't have any more space molar conductivity increases with decrease in concentration that i have written it here right this i have written it here see see this part molar conductivity increases with decrease in concentration great what is molar conductivity how do we write it we write it as lambda m is equal to k kappa divided by c what is c c is basically from your solutions chapter or from the chapter of uh, basic concept of chemistry you know that what is c c is basically it can be written as number of moles divided by volume correct we can write it like this yes so for one molar solution for one molar solution can i write c is equal to 1 by v that is per unit volume because i know that is the definition yes per unit volume so that means that my lambda m can be written as kappa multiplied with v yes kappa multiplied with v this is something that we will remember now also one more thing that you have to understand again this is also written in your ncrt so on dilution concentration is decrease right concentration is decrease from this formula from this formula we see that we see that here what happens is what happens is there is another graph guys okay there is another graph where do i draw that graph here now where do i draw that graph yeah let's draw it here there is another graph everybody check it out in this graph what is happening is you are going to take you are going to take lambda m okay you are going to take uh um, root over c yes you're going to take c half yes that is concentration all right and uh, here you are going to take molar conductivity lambda m all right okay you take that then what happens is let's say that this is your zero and this is your 0.2 and then here you have 0.4 and uh, let's say that here you have 200 somewhere here you have 400 somewhere all right now for a strong electrolyte we see that the graph kind of looks like this okay and for a weak electrolyte we see that the graph kind of looks like this okay all right yes yes the, now what do we see here we see that we see that everybody please check it out be very careful dilution increases here we see that the moment dilution increases yes lambda m also increases and very fast very fast the lambda m increases yes that is what you can see yes dilution is increases lambda m increase like whoop like this but in case of the strong electrolyte yes increase in case of the strong electrolyte here you see that dilution increases 
lambda m also increases but not so fast correct not so fast and this is a strong electrolyte for example kcl whereas the green line is for a weak electrolyte let's say ch3 cooh so the question is what is happening here what is happening here what is actually happening here so from here we see that from here we see that now now please understand this please understand this that here there is molar conductivity is dependent on do you see that it is dependent on k that is your kappa it is dependent on conductivity now it is also dependent on volume and what are we doing more we are adding more volume we are adding more solvent and the volume is something that is the deciding factor that is more prominent because we are increasing more volume so we see that as the volume increases molar conductivity also increases are we understanding everybody are we understanding and right now this graph that i spoke about okay this graph that i spoke about everybody please 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 check it out here for some more time here i'm going to make some space with this blocks everything will look like a rough page but you can write the notes very properly okay you can write the notes very properly but please just check it out here okay now this graph that we see this graph is actually based on an equation okay what is that equation the equation my dear student is lambda m is equal to em not minus ac half and if you look carefully if you look very carefully obviously this graph is basically what y is equal to mx plus c it looks like that which is basically a which is basically the equation of a straight line and that is exactly what we see for the strong electrolyte isn't it so what is our c our c is equal to c is equal to em not yes and what is m m is equal to minus a okay m is equal to minus a which is why there is a negative slope which is why this is a negative slope isn't it a is your negative slope that's why you will get to see it and by the way this a that what is this a actually this a is actually a constant for um constant for depending on the type of electrolyte yes this a depends on the type of electrolyte and it is a constant for example if i take kcl kcl will get divided into k plus cl minus this type of is this this type of uh, electrolyte is called as one one type then i have mg cl2 mg cl2 will get divided into mg2 plus plus cl minus so this is called as two one type then you have let's say mgso4 that will get divided into mg2 plus plus so4 2 minus so this is called as 2 2 type so all of these one one type will have exactly same value of a all of these two one type will have exactly the same value of a all of these two two type they will have exactly the same value of a and this em not that we spoke about my dear student do you know what is this em not this em not my dear student is your limiting molar conductivity what is this it is called as limiting molar conductivity now where does this limiting molar conductivity uh, where, where is this limiting molar conductivity coming from so you have to understand that when when you have added so much of solvent yes when you have added so much of solvent so much of solvent so much of solvent that is dilution has happened to infinity you have infinitely diluted it so much so that now the concentration is almost zero yes now imagine if in this glass if i keep adding water 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 the water has flowed uh, the water has flowed out now i have kept it in a bucket i have still kept adding water 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 do you think that a big bucket full of water a huge bucket full of water in that if i add one spoon of salt will you even be able to taste the salt no so the amount of solute that is present in that bucket full of water is almost nil right almost nil so at infinite dilution when your concentration is almost zero that is when your molar conductivity is equal to limiting molar conductivity and now we come to this very famous law called as kolrash law so this guy kolrash what he did you know he kept observing this em not he kept observing this limiting molar conductivity for many strong electrolytes he kept observing them okay 
he kept observing them and he kept when when he did this infinite dilution when he kept doing this infinite dilution and when he observed it for strong electrolyte he saw that oh the limiting molar conductivity of an electrolyte was actually coming out to be the sum of the particular anion and cations limiting molar conductivity what did i say once again so remember that i took a salt yes i took one spoon of salt in a huge bucket full of water yes and that means that this is in finite dilution there is much 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 amount of water and i'm not even able to taste the salt anymore it's that much diluted at that point of time at that point of time do you know how are they contributing to the limiting molar conductivity so you have to imagine that the na plus and the cl minus now are very far away in that bucket full of water i have diluted it so much that the na plus ions if they are at the bottom the cl minus is somewhere at the top they have really huge you know distance between them and at that point of time they are like ah okay the positive ion is not there ah okay the negative ion is not there let's just do our own work and they start contributing by themselves okay they start independently contributing okay they start independently contributing and that is when at infinite dilution what is happening the limiting molar conductivity is equal to the sum of the sum of the individual contribution of the anion and the cation and that is exactly what is written now read the statement the statement says that the equivalent conductivity of an in, uh, electrolyte at infinite dilution is the sum of the ionic conductances of the cation and the anion given by the electrolyte at infinite dilution so so basically for example if i take let's say nacl or oh, forget about all of these ax by type of solution you might not even understand just take for example nacl i'm taking the example of nacl my dear student okay if i take nacl what will happen here what will happen is that the e not value the e not value of nacl will be equal to will be equal to lambda m not na plus plus lambda m not cl minus that's it that's it easy peasy easy peasy so this was for strong electrolyte now obviously we also know that kolrash kolrash law of independent migration of ions was also given for weak electrolyte now for strong electrolyte it was easy that yes we have the uh, you know we have the uh, the 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 usual k uh, the anions and the cations and we understand but in case of weak electrolyte but choose what happens in case of weak electrolyte okay so let's write it for weak electrolyte now in case of weak electrolyte we know that they don't even completely dissociate isn't it they don't even completely dissociate so what do we do for them let's write it let's take the example of ch3 cooh okay and let's say that this is an equilibrium so that means that i will be getting ch3 coo minus plus h plus it is at equilibrium now obviously do you remember how in the solutions chapter we used to solve it so let's say that the concentration is the c here that means 0 0 initially yes but after some time what will happen is it will be c minus c alpha yes and here it will be c alpha here it will be c alpha am i right yes correct everybody yes now what is alpha no no now we have to calculate it for ka let's calculate it for ka what will be our ka our ka will be c alpha multiplied with c alpha divided by c minus c alpha sorry i hope you remember it which is basically nothing but c square alpha square divided by c 1 minus alpha correct which is nothing but this c and this c will get cancelled so it will be c alpha square divided by 1 minus alpha and what is alpha alpha is basically your degree of remember you all remember what is it degree of dissociation yes this is your degree of dissociation if you don't remember please take a look at the solutions chapter i hope that you will be able to understand okay all right now from here obviously from here are we done no we are not done yet okay we are not done yet alpha is degree of dissociation so how do we calculate alpha alpha will be equal to lambda m divided by lambda m not yes same thing can i put it for this k alpha let's let uh, sorry not k alpha let's let's put it in this equation let's put it in this equation yes ka 
what will I get Ka for? Ka will be C multiplied with this, this, this. Multiplied with lambda m divided by lambda m naught square. Yes. Divided by 1 minus lambda m divided by lambda m naught. Yes. Lambda m naught. Correct. Now if you solve this a little bit more, if you solve this a little bit more, what you will get is you will be getting, you will be getting everybody. What will you be getting? Just solve it a little bit more. Just make it simplify. Simplify it. You will be getting C lambda uh, C lambda m square. Yes. C lambda m square divided by divided uh, by you will be getting here lambda m naught lambda m naught minus lambda m. This will be your final equation. Okay. This will be your final equation. So basically what are the applications of Kohlrausch law from here you can find out what is degree of association alpha you can also find out k alpha you can also find out lambda m naught yes you can also find out ksp all of that you can calculate okay all of this you can calculate all right everybody yes guys yes cool eh? now we come to the second bit of the chapter the second half of the chapter which i think we will be able to solve it very easily because uh, this is not too tough the tough part of it is already done guys okay the tough part of it is already done so let's start with electrolytic cell come on now do you remember that this was the case of uh, non-spontaneous reaction yes where the chemical reaction was actually not happening by itself yes and that means that uh, you had to put on some external energy for the reaction to happen isn't it so this is your electrolytic cell and in this case what did we study we have uh, studied that external source of voltage is required to bring about a chemical reaction so let's write that down here what what is required here external external source of voltage external source of voltage is used to is used to bring about a chemical reaction in this case okay yes it is used to bring about a chemical reaction in this case and we already know that do you remember that delta g is greater than zero here that means that delta g is positive and if you remember that the formula was delta g is equal to minus n f e cell so that means that if delta g is positive then e cell has to be negative everybody do you remember this yes do you remember this very good very good very good everybody all right amazing so that is that means that we are going to use some non-spontaneous reactions here yes and uh, in this case we have to study about electrolysis now let's talk about this word electrolysis what does this word mean electrolysis electrolysis means everybody electro means using electricity using electricity and lysis means disintegration of a compound okay lysis means disintegration of a compound okay all right so basically what you're going to do is you are going to use electricity to break a compound all right let's do it all right let's do it everybody so let's draw a diagram here okay let's draw a diagram here what is our diagram going to be let's take one container this time you remember all this time we had two different different containers but this time let's take only one container okay in this one container what are we going to do is we are going to use the same kind of electrodes that is on both the side let's take cu plate that is copper plate okay both the sides is going to be cu plate also make note the solution is also going to be same remember in the previous one we had taken znso4 dipped uh, ZnSO4 in that in ZnSO4 solution zinc rod was dipped and you remember that in copper sulfate solution copper was dipped right but this time we're not doing that this time we're only going to add one electrolyte I mean same solution both the electrodes will be uh, dropped in and this time we will be having CuSO4 solution okay all right we will be having CuSO4 solution cool now what am i going to do obviously we will connect a battery here yes there will be a small line there will be a big line which i'm pretty sure that everybody knows the bigger line is the positive side yes and the smaller line is the negative side so this one becomes your cathode 
and this one becomes your anode here okay what happens in anode everybody remembers that oxidation happens in anode correct yes everybody what happens in cathode everybody remembers that cathode may reduction happens why because red cat and all do you all remember now what will happen the moment the switch is on electricity is running what will happen here what do we expect we expect that this cu will become cu plus and this so4 will become so4 minus right now the cu plus actually cu2 plus this cu2 plus will obviously get attracted towards the negative electrode where reduction is happening so here what will happen cu plus cu2 plus will go and get attracted to the negative electrode whereas so4 2 minus will get attracted to the positive electrode right so after some time what do we expect to see after some time we we, we expect to see that the anode is getting thicker and thicker and thicker and with this exact process my dear student do you know what we can do we can go for purification of purification of impure metal okay what can we do purification of impure metal can be done so if you let's say that you have a copper okay this glass for example it looks dirty isn't it but tr trust me on this it's not dirty actually what is happening is that whenever you use copper glasses or copper bottles oxidation starts happening here yes so basically this is copper patina this green patches that you see these are copper patina where there is copper carbonate and copper hydroxide yes all right so if i want to let's let's say that i just want to make it look new absolutely new what am i going to do i'm going to connect this in the anode <laughs> I'm going to connect this in the, sorry, not, not this in the anode. I'm going to connect this in the cathode and I will use pure metal, metal in anode. The moment I start electricity from the anode, the copper particles will get this deposited on this glass and it will look like new. Hmm. So what did I say? What are we going to do? Did I say that? Yes. Yes. So basically what are we going to do is that in the cathode, in the cathode we will connect the object that needs to be pl plated the object that needs to be plated cool and in case of anode what will we use the object that will plate the object that will plate I hope I said the same thing, right? So once again, everybody, I'm going to connect this in the cathode. Yes. And the pure metal will be connected in the anode. From the anode, the copper particles or the copper ions will coat this and this will look like new. This will be connected in the cathode, everybody. Okay. This will be connected in the cathode. So we have understood what is electrolysis because this is the topic that we have studied in our younger classes, right? In our class 8th or 9th standard, we have studied about electrolysis. But the point is that while I was doing this experiment, while I was coating this, copper, coating this copper glass with copper and trying to make it look new, how am I supposed to quantify? How do I know that how much copper ions or how much copper actually came and sat on this copper glass? How do I quantify? How do I quantify? For that, we will be introducing ourselves to, yes, Michael Faraday. Michael Faraday did some experiments and then he, he tried to quantify. So we will read about that. But before that, uh, everybody just read some of these uh, sentences, uh, you know, for electrolysis. These are some of the uh, basically, uh, you know, some properties and some, some important uh, points of electrolysis. So we know that electrolysis is basically the process of oxidation and reduction due to current in the electrolytic solution. The cell used for this process is called as an electrolytic cell. Uh, it is called as an electrolytic cell. The product obtained during electrolysis depends on the following factors. What are the following factors? Nature of the electrolyte. What electrolyte you have taken? Concentration of electrolyte. How much is the concentration of the electrolyte? Charge density flowing during electrolysis and nature of the electrode. Okay. What are the electrodes that you are taking? That also you talk about. Now coming to Faraday's first law. Before that, let me write down here that we wanted to quantify electrolysis. Yes. I mean, yes. See, these are all very qualitative terms that yeah, yeah, from impure metal, I will get a pure metal and all of that. I understand. 
but it is science hey it is chemistry right in chemistry we don't talk about all of these substandard uh, you know uh, topics like this right we, we need everything to be standard we want to quantify things we want to make our life harder and we want to know how much kg and how much mole and how much ions and how much metals and all of these we want to quantify things right so faraday was the first scientist who described the quantitative aspects of electrolysis okay faraday was the first scientist was the first scientist who described who described the quantitative quantitative aspect of electrolysis cool all right everybody so let's talk about faraday's first law the first law of faraday says that the amount of chemical reaction which occurs at any electrode during electrolysis by a current is proportional to the quantity of electricity passed through the electrolyte for example okay let's say that i want to purify i want to make this new right now what if i just switch on the current and switch it off switch on switch off how much how much copper will get plated on very very little switch on switch off switch on switch off i did just that so only for a second maybe the copper was running so only this much copper will get plated now if i keep it on and i daydream and i sleep and i'm like falling off then obviously it will get plated very nicely right exactly that is what he said okay so let's write it down the first law let's write down the first law here okay what did i say i said that the amount the amount of chemical reaction the amount of chemical reaction which occurs at any 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 what did i say any electrode which occurs at any electrode during electrolysis during electrolysis by a current is proportional to the to the quantity of to the quantity of electricity quantity of electricity passed through the electrolyte great now what is this this is definition or this is in words but tell me something are we going to use in words no of course we need a formula what is formula the formula everybody is the formula everybody is w is directly proportional to q what is q q is basically nothing but the charge okay all right q is nothing but charge okay you can also write it as w directly proportional to i multiplied with t i i is the current t is the time okay all right or we can also write it as w is equal to z multiplied with q where z is what z is the electrochemical equivalence okay what is z z is the z is electrochemical equivalence electrochemical equivalence okay all right everybody yes and uh, and 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 this this w will be basically the amount of amount of any metal that is deposited okay amount of any metal that is deposited all right everybody yes understood now what is faraday's second law everybody let's talk about that also faraday's second law was that okay now imagine that there are different substances that are liberated by the same quantity of electricity so let's say that in one of the electrode there is silver in one of the electrode there is copper how will you do this and both of them are connected to the same battery now what do you do and for that matter he introduced the second law the second law suggests that everybody please take a look at it the second law says that the amount of 
the amount of different substances amount of different substances liberated by the same quantity same quantity of electricity yes same quantity of electricity moving ha moving through moving through the electrolytic solution moving through the electrolytic solution are proportional to their chemical equivalent weights yes chemical equivalent weights do you understand this everybody yes for example remember what did i say z is equal to z is equal to now let's calculate for z see z is basically your electrochemical equivalence right so z will become see equivalent weights divided by f what is f f is faraday's constant okay f is faraday's constant which is 96487 or for our ease of calculation we also take it as 96500 okay 96500 All right, this is what we take, and from here we have almost come to the end of it. This is just a cheat sheet, everybody. Let me write this down. This is just your cheat sheet. All the formulas are here, everyone. All the formula are given here for kappa, for uh, lambda m, yes, for lambda equivalent conductance. All the factors are written here. This is basically just your cheat sheet. Now we come to batteries, the last topic of the chapter, almost. But yes, there is one more topic that I want to teach you. That is preferential discharge theory. for batteries what do we know we know that batteries are basically what cells right cells are the uh, singular form of uh, uh, back batteries now cells which cannot be recharged example are dry cell and mercury cell secondary cell just read this i think you will be able to understand secondary cells are which can be recharged for example the lead storage battery and the nickel cadmium cell right then there are also fuel cells what do the fuel cells do the fuel cells in which energy produced from the combustion of fuels can be converted into electrical energy for example the hydrogen and the oxygen fuel cell right these are the ones again here is a cheat sheet the whole sheet is made here you can just go through it and you can remember what are the things basically this is not the very toughest part of the chapter the toughest part of the chapter is already done coming back to one last topic that i want to teach you before i end the session is preferential discharge theory what is preferential discharge theory okay now in case of preferential discharge theory there are actually two cases number 1 is case 1 this is for cations okay this is for cations everybody for cations okay for remember this remember this everybody yes 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 what happened in this electrolysis products electrolysis products like who is going to attach who is going to get discharged to the cathode who is going to get discharged to the anode and what if there are different amount of substances that are present in the electrolyte yes so who is going to get uh, attached to the cathode first okay all right and who is going to get attached to the anode first so because for that to identify and to and to calculate that who is going to get discharged on the cathode or the anode first for that we have this rule preferential discharge theory right it says that preferential that means who is going to get the preference to get discharged first now in case of cations what happens is when when uh, two different ions are present in the solution then what happens the ion will the ion that has higher reduction potential will migrate first okay the ion that has higher reduction potential will migrate first if two different ions if two different ions are present in the solution and how do we calculate who has highest reduction potential do you remember that electrochemical series and do you remember that chlorine has 
positive fluorine has positive potential yes whereas as you keep coming down zinc the reduced form of zinc was not available do you remember that that was the electrochemical series from there you can figure out that which cations will migrate first okay all right now coming back to coming back to anions okay case 2 for anions for anions we do not have a list as such right for anions we do not have a list for such so what what we have to what we have to do is ease of deposition or tendency to migrate the tendency to migrate you have a list that is so4 2 minus is the worst quality it will not migrate at all then you have no3 minus least then you have oh minus then you have cl minus then you have a br minus and finally you have i minus i minus has the highest tendency to migrate okay tendency to migrate tendency to migrate cool got it yes this is your preferential discharge theory that's it everybody after that i don't think anything else is remaining i think we are almost done with uh, everything basically yes we are done with everything uh, just that uh, yeah everything is done concentration of cell preferential discharge theory i think we have spoken about everything yes uh and 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 uh, is there anything left is there anything left mm, no 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 that's it we are almost done with everything yes guys cool everyone now shall we solve some questions let's solve some questions Chalo. Your first question is E0 for the electrochemical cell ZnS2 Zn2 plus 1 molar aqueous to Cu2 plus 1 molar aqueous Cu is 1.10 volt at 25 degrees Celsius. The equilibrium constant for the cell reaction. What is it going to be? Okay. So very easily we can see that what is given to us. What is given to us? The standard. See? 1.10 volt is given to you. 1.10 volt is given to you all right so standard emf standard emf is given to you as 1.10 volt all right that is e naught cell that is e naught cell is given to you all right yes what is the expression for equilibrium constant we know that it is e naught cell is equal to 0 0.0591 divided by n log kc right yes so let's just substitute what will we get 1.10 volt is equal to 0 0.0591 divided by n n is going to be 2 because 2 plus 2 electrons are there so 2 yes and then what do we have to add here log of k log k so from here if you calculate log k what will it be uh, 2 into 1.1 so 2.2 2.2 divided by 0 0.0591 2.2 divided by 0 0.0591 just uh, let's calculate this let's calculate this everybody let's send let's calculate this okay uh, yes it's 37 guys it's 37 so that means that means that it is going to be k is equal to 1 into 10 to the power 37 that means that option b is the correct answer that means that option b is the correct answer all right everybody let's go ahead let's solve the next question the next question is the time required to coat a metal surface of 80 centimeter square with 5 into 10 to the power minus 3 centimeter thick layer of silver density by passing a car current 3 ampere through silver nitrate solution okay what are the things that are given to you let's check it out everybody come on All right, so um, in this question, what exactly is uh, given to us and what do we have to calculate? The time required to coat a metal surface of surface of this much with uh, this much thick layer of silver. Density is given to you and passing current this. Okay. All right, so what do we have to do? What do we have to do? First things first, let's calculate mass of silver required. Okay, mass of silver required. How much silver will be required? See, density is given to you. So, 1.05 multiplied with 80 multiplied with 5 into 10 to the power minus 3. This, all of these equal to will be 1.05 into 80 into 5. Okay, let's calculate this. I will need a calculator. I won't be able to solve it all just like that. I'm not that great with mathematics. So, 1.05 multiplied with 80 
multiplied with 5 is equal to 420. So I think uh, 420 into 10 to the power minus 3, we can definitely write it as 0 0.42 kg, right? Yes. Now, what do we know from Faraday's law? What do we know from Faraday's law, guys? Faraday's law suggested that W is equal to capital M divided by 96500 for ease of this thing, yeah, for ease of calculation, NF. What is N? NF is basically your N factor into I into T, okay? NF is your N factor where here N factor is going to be 1, okay? Here N factor is going to be 1. M is the molecular weight of uh, AG. This is your molecular weight, okay? I is obviously current and T is your uh, time, okay? So let's just put all of these into the into this formula. So we know that we have figured out the weight also. So this is 0 0.42 is equal to what is molecular weight of silver? I think it is 108 divided by 96500 into 1 multiplied with 3 into t from here if you try to calculate t what will you get tell me from here if you try to calculate t please please calculate and tell me what is the answer calculate and tell me the answer but according to the question i think that it is option b 125 second that's what it has said but you please do calculate and let me know okay now the next question is going to be your homework because of course one homework i must give you one homework at least i must give you Okay, one homework I should definitely give you. Let's uh, let's forget about this. Let's go to the next question. The next question is the molar conductivity of a 0.5 mole DM cube solution of AgNO3 with electrolytic conductivity of this at 298 Kelvin. All right, so what do we have to do? Lambda M is equal to, what do we know? Kappa multiplied with 1000, yes, divided by molarity that is capital M. All we have to do is just put everything right here so 5.76 into 10 to the power minus 3 this is not 5 this is simons okay this is s this is s okay 5.76 uh, 76 into 10 to the power minus 3 into into 1000 divided by what is molarity here molarity is also given to you 0 0.5 now calculate this and tell me what is the answer Calculate this and just just calculate this and know the answer. Okay, the answer is also here. Okay, so I'm not uh, spending too much time because I believe that you have already spent a lot of time for this chapter. So let's just try to do it as quickly as possible. Now, at 25 degrees Celsius, molar conductance of 0.1 molar aqueous solution of ammonium hydroxide is 9.45 more centimeter square per mole, and at infinite dilution, its molar conductance is 238. Uh, more centimeter square per mole the degree of ionization of ammonium hydroxide at the same concentration and temperature is okay so we know that degree of dissociation that is alpha is equal to what do we know alpha is equal to lambda m divided by lambda m now do you remember we have studied this formula right so from here what do we have to do what is lambda m lambda is m is, is equal to c uh, molar conductance is 9.45 so it is 9.45 divided by what is lambda m naught lambda m naught is i think uh, 238 say 238 yes so 238 just calculated guys just calculated i think it uh, you will be getting option b you will be getting option b and uh, yes this is another just just calculation i think i've told you that also how to calculate electro potential and with this note my dear students we are done with this chapter I hope you have understood everything. If there is anything that you did not understand, do let me know in the chat box. Do let me know in the comment section. I will, I personally do see the, uh, you know, I, I do check out the comment section. So if there is anything that you have a doubt on, I can help you. And uh, all the very best. Tara, bye bye. I'll see you with more and more, more PYQs from this chapter. And we will solve a lot of questions from Colrash Law. And we will solve a lot of questions regarding to the molar conductivity. We will solve a lot of questions regarding Faraday's Law and everything. So that it helps you. With this note, lots of love. Tara, bye bye. I'll see you next time. Bye.